It's time for Windows Weekly. Paul Therott and Mary Jo are here in their Halloween finest, ready to talk about all sorts of stuff. They've got their Surface tablets, the Surface 2, and they want to give you their review. Paul talks about the new Dell venue and, of course, the latest on Microsoft CEO search and the merger with Nokia. It's all coming up next on Windows Weekly. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Windows Weekly is provided by CashFly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is Windows Weekly with Paul Therod and Mary Jo Foley, episode 335, recorded Thursday, October 31st, 2013. There's a big but. Windows Weekly is brought to you by Carbonite. Whether you have one computer at home or several at your small business, Carbonite backs up your files to the cloud automatically and continually. Plus, access your files anytime, anywhere with a free app. Start your free trial at Carbonite.com. No credit card required. Just use the offer code WINDOWS and you'll get two bonus months with purchase. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash Windows. It's time for Windows Weekly, the show where we talk about all your Windows needs. Microsoft, Xbox, all of that stuff. We've only got three more weeks of Paul Therott, then the Xbox One arrives. Actually, maybe <laughs> less, because Ghosts, when does Ghosts come out? It comes out uh, next, in, week. next week. So this Tuesday. could be the last week we see Paul for some time. <laughs> Paul Therott is the blogger at uh, the super site for Windows, winsupersite.com. He writes all those great secrets books, the Windows 8 secrets windowsphonebook.com for his Windows phone book. He is the expert on how to use this stuff. Mary Jo Foley is a blogger who has great inside sources at Microsoft and reveals all at allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where her ZDNet blog is. Good to have you both. Hello. Hello. Hello, Leo. Hello, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> both of, Happy Halloween. Thanks. Mary Jo oh. says, although we can't independently verify this, that she's wearing orange and black. What I you am. Got? Orange socks? Nice. Oh, okay, an orange top. I Good. believe that is a Red Sox red shirt, I see. And oh, Paul, yeah. And Paul Therod is still hungover from last night's celebration. <laughs> that was exciting. I'm love. celebrating the end of 17 midnight plus, you know, uh, <laughs> times to bed in the past 30 days. <laughs> the postseason like, is tough on you East Coast. As yeah. <laughs> well, anyway, congratulations. That's a, uh, and I, and I feel like we've all won a little something. I think we all have won. I agree. <laughs> well, Johnny Gomes is a local boy. You know, he went to yes, uh, I know he's from Pasadena. I mean, yeah, from, uh, Petaluma, so yeah, Pasadena, Pasadena no, Petaluma. <laughs> and so everybody, Petaluma is all. Pomona. Excited. What's that place you're from? This um, is a good baseball town. You know, our yeah. little leaguers were in the World Series last year, and uh, our uh, big little leaguers, what are the American Legion ball, were in the World Series this year or the playoffs this year. Sure. So this is a good baseball town. I know all of those facts because of the inane announcers on Fox. They say it over and over. You know, love any story, no matter how small, instead of the game that we're watching. <laughs> is that is that Tim Carver? Is that Tim again? No, it's like Joe Buck and that Joe ancient Buck. jerk that's finally retiring. I swear to God, he was like, you know, back when we started doing this, when Ramses oh. too was still running <laughs> Egypt. Baseball you know, like, announcers, I, he, it's a uh, lover, they're polarizing. It's a love or hate thing. It's you know, we've, so off. We've got John Miller out here, used to be the Orioles guy, and he does voices, and he's a great raconteur, but I know what you're saying. Some, sometimes you want to say, come on, can you, what's going on on the field? Listen, there doesn't have to be a narrative, right. you know? Right. There was a moment during, I did not to go on and on about the Red Sox, but what the hell? Um, <laughs> there was a moment where the umpire of the game walked over to a guy behind home plate because he had seen him so many times yeah this guy is 85 years old he's been coming to the Fenway wow. every game since oh. oh my god that's so you awesome. could sense fox def descending on this guy like vultures yeah and the woman next scene you know sure enough the blonde woman is in the stands with the guy he could not have cared less about any question this woman was asking he's <laughs> like look i'm I watching the work game across the street i love baseball and she'd ask him questions and he'd say something that had nothing to do with the questions they just desperately wanted to get this, the old guy on TV. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> Terrible. Anyway. Every sorry. home game for the last 70 years. Yeah. That is 70 times 81. <laughs> That's I know. 570 games. No, no. Seven, no 630 no. games. Yeah. It's crazy. In person. And how many, how many uh, Narragansett beers is that? 
That's the, more <laughs> to the point. Eats. <laughs> <laughs> more to the point. Yeah. Uh, I know. Wow. It's crazy. And now, do they shave the, the ZZ Top beards now? I would hope so. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> yeah, really. I know. In the 70s, remember the Oakland A's, our, our local team here, did the big mustache. Yeah, the porn mustache. The porn stash, yeah. <laughs> right. But, uh, but really, seriously, uh, the beards are just, they, they don't look, they're not. They're, they're not, uh, they all look like serial killers. Yeah. <laughs> you know. 5,000, I, I got it wrong, 5,670 games. Yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> a lot of baseball. He's watched base, the average length of a baseball game go from 45 minutes to yeah, four hours. Right. You know, 70 years yep. ago. <laughs> yeah. It was a half we're an hour we were lunch. out. You barely had time for a hot dog. Yeah. Go, have, go have brunch, watch the game, come home and eat lunch. Have you got, Do you go to a lot of Red Sox games? No, I don't go to a lot. We went to two this year. Um, but we, my wife and I watch baseball. My wife watch, watches more than I do. I, uh, I asked my wife, I said, how many baseball games do you think we watch this year? And she said, oh, over 100 easily. Oh. Easily over 100. Wow. That's yeah. a lot. Yeah. Baseball is great because you can, you can sit in the den and when something happens, you can pay attention. Right. When something's not happening, you can work a little bit. You can fold laundry. You can do your taxes. You can, you know, you can, you can do these other things, you know. It's a sport made for drinking beer, eating hot dogs, yeah. talking with your friends. Yep. It's very relaxing. And when you go to the ball yard, it's even more relaxing. You're yeah, at, the, the, you're Fenway, the Fenway Park. Fenway's obviously beautiful. I love Fenway. The steps are worn. But what's interesting, I mean, they've been there, what, 1917 they built it, something like that? The steps, you could see, you know, the, the footsteps of hundreds of thousands of depressed Bo I can tell you fans. the seats were made for a different size man. Yeah, the butts were smaller. <laughs> you know, I can tell you that. And it's some a of those, cozy place, and as we say. I swear to God, some of those hot dogs have been cooking since 1917. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, they haven't changed the water since, you know, the <laughs> Hey, it's boiling. <laughs> no it's that. boiling. It's sterile. Uh, lordy, lordy. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, let us talk about uh, Windows. Both Paul and Mary Jo were lucky enough to have Surface 2s. They've had them for a week now. Mm -hmm. These are the RTs. When you say 2, in my mind, I do the translation, and it's yeah. a Surface T RT. It's it's Windows RT on the Surface 2. Because the Surface 2 Pro is Windows 8.1. So this Windows RT, right? Microsoft would really like you not to think about I this. know, but I have to. <laughs> you know, that you're just getting Windows. You, but you do kind of have to think about that because... No, no I, I agree with you. I'm just, <laughs> it's just, just saying. It's all Windows, Leo. It's all Windows. It's just Windows, Leo. So... Now, Mary Jo, you love the, your old RT, your old Surface RT. That was, yep. you, you were the RT fan. Paul, not so much. This yeah. is the fundamental difference that drives us apart. <laughs> <laughs> no, you reflect the two different kinds of Windows users, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, or at least in the modern era. Paul is a desktop guy. Paul uses yeah. Windows, like, you know, seriously. You, not like Mary Jo, not I use it on her silly, silly use of Windows. <laughs> this is notepad. <laughs> So yeah. so let me let me let's start with Mary Jo because you had you and used pretty, yeah, 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 of course. pretty seriously the uh, previous edition Surface Two, yeah. mm -hmm. big improvement. Yep. Um, I I like the Surface Two a lot, uh, but I I wrote a review today and published it today saying I like it a lot, but I don't like it enough to pay four hundred and forty nine dollars to upgrade to it. Um, and the reason I came to that conclusion was I put Windows eight one on my current Surface RT uh, and kind of sorted out all the issues around that. And after I clicked the new keyboard, the new type keyboard with the backlit keys into my existing Surface RT, I liked it pretty much as well as the Surface 2. It the, wasn't worth the money to upgrade. The 8.1 upgrade was a, was a big upgrade, a good upgrade. It was. And it really improved Surface RT. It did. Yeah. So, you know, I, I definitely noticed the speed on the Surface 2 opening new sites, um, browsing the web. I noticed the difference. I noticed that the screen is a higher resolution. I, I noticed all these things, but I just feel like if Microsoft had made it easier for me to trade up from my Surface RT to my 2, I might have done it. Yep. But it's super hard to do this, and it's not lucrative at all. So I'm not, I'm not jumping yet. Sticking with the RT. Have you looked into how much you can get for Surface RT? Yeah, so at Microsoft stores, I can get almost nothing. I can get like 30 yeah. bucks. 
um, oh. at Best oh. Buy, if I mail in my Surface RT, the power cord, and my receipt, um, I think I can get about 150 bucks for a very gently used version of my machine. Still not very good. It's not that much, right? I mean, my Surface RT is in mint condition. I took really good care of it. And um, so I'm, I'm kind of disappointed about the trade-up thing. And, and I'm also thinking maybe right before Christmas, we're going to see the prices drop on these. And then maybe I would spring for one. But right now, no. I'm going to just stick with the RT, buy the new keyboard, uh, the yeah. type keyboard, and uh, just leave it at that, I I'm, think. I'm looking at Gazelle. You, you have a 64 gig Surface RT, right? No, I have a 32. Oh, you have 32. Oh, mm -hmm. all right. Well, let me just yeah. let me just yeah. Check. What does Gazelle say? Uh, Amazon also has a trade-in program, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I looked into Amazon. I don't think I saw anything that worthwhile. And you have a yeah. touch or type cover, right? I have a, a type cover, but I've already promised yeah. to give this it's one not, to somebody. It's not okay, great. so you're not it's 100, sell 141. That. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's at kinda, most. Yeah. yeah. So I that's know. that's about what Microsoft is giving you, right? It's close. No, Microsoft's offering at their stores like thirty bucks for oh, the. Um, what? Yeah, and th this is that's no. If you could get two hundred dollars for this, I think you could make a case yeah. in a way. I do you too. Two dollars. The the yeah. problem is, and it's not bad for someone like you who has a device because you already have a keyboard. At least you could get by with that I if did. you had to. Mm -hmm. But the real expense of Surface, no matter which one you're talking about, is none of them come with a keyboard. So if right. you're coming at this new, it doesn't start at four forty nine. It starts at almost six hundred dollars. Right, when you add the uh, keyboard in. That's yeah. a lot of money. And I, you know, I feel like I've been talking about this since the original iPad came out. But for some reason, when it comes to Apple products, people, four ninety nine and up is like no big deal. But, you know, 600 bucks is a lot of money. It's a lot of money. I, I, yeah. I just have a, it, it, it is a tough thing to recommend to people to spend that much money yeah. on something like this. Yeah. And, and you know what? If they hadn't done the Windows 8 one upgrade I think I probably would have jumped right, to the Surface right, yeah, 2. Right, yeah. ironically. I know. But they had to do that to come out with the new devices, I guess. So, yep. um, yeah, it's it's a real chicken and egg for them because after I kind of ironed out the kinks and worked through some of the battery life things I had going on and, and um, some of the IE 11 issues, I've, I'm kind of getting those under control. It feels like, you know what, I could I could keep this device around and make, make it work. It's, mm -hmm. it's not horrible. You know, it's funny, uh, not to derail this but i think this is a problem apple has too where a lot of people say i don't need a new ipad the one yeah. i got is fine and this is a problem i think in general for the tablet market it's a it's sure. already in a few years so mature that there isn't much pressure to upgrade really if it does everything you want sure i mean I, frankly that's how this stuff should be i don't know how it we, should be it this way got, this is normal got, we, but we got to this world of disposable devices right. you know and it and adding insult to injury uh they're expensive <laughs> You know, um, yeah. a smartphone that you buy for two hundred dollars on contract is really six, seven, eight hundred dollars. Um, it's a lot of money. People replace those every year in many cases. You know, uh, tablets for a full size tablet, five hundred dollars and up typically. Uh, it's very expensive. You know, even uh, even a um, a mini tablet, a couple hundred bucks, three hundred bucks, four hundred bucks, depending on the the version. It's a lot of money to be spending every single year for something that is a fairly evolutionary update to the thing that came before it. Do you think it's going to be more like PC upgrades where people do them every, I don't know, three to seven years, something like, something like that? I don't, I, I actually don't think so. I, I think they're going to keep lowering the prices on some of these things. I think there's, there's this weird drive to the bottom thing that occurs when you get, um, I don't want to call Amazon a bottom feeder exactly, but when you have companies that are selling products that are essentially at a loss uh, because they want you to buy into the other services and so forth. It's kind of a tough market to be in all of a sudden. Yeah. You know, like the Nexus uh, 5 you were buying today. Uh, 350 bucks to start is a fantastic price for a no-contract phone that has LTE. Five-inch, 1080p screen, yeah. right? I mean, that's an amazing value. The pressure, that, that, and it's not to, like a sub-spec phone. This puts no. a huge pressure on right. everybody. Right. Yeah. I mean, I would say that that phone is to the high-end phone market what the Lumia 520 is to the low-end phone market, where it sort of exposes the lie of the pricing model that exists otherwise, you know, no the kidding. subsidized uh, this smartphone. Is, this is the unsubsidized price. It's amazing. 350 you know, bucks for the 16 gig, 399 for the 32 The thing gig. is, by the way, you know, so once you have a company out. that comes in and does this, there's yeah. no stepping back from this. I mean, I Apple will try to sell their stuff yeah. the way they do for as long as they can, but there is no stepping back from this. You can't go back to higher prices, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, not across the board. 
The one, the one thing that I think is different, though, with tablets is it, it depends if you think about them as a gadget or if you think about them as a PC. And I think if you think about them as a gadget, you're, you might fall into the camp that some iPad users are where they always want the latest one. They don't right. care. They'll, yep. they'll spring for it. But if you think of it as a PC, you're like, you know what? It's good enough. It works. Um, it's not horrible. So I'm going to stick with it until I have to upgrade. Oh, those so people are Microsoft, terrible customers. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> the ones so you don't want. To, yeah. Right? Microsoft wants you to start well, thinking of tablets as gadgets, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, all, all this cloud computing stuff, and it's not, it's not just the stuff people think about automatically when you hear the phrase cloud computing. It's other stuff like desktops. I mean, not desktop. Settings sync and so forth. Yeah. Um, goes a long way towards making the experience of getting a new device that much better. You know, when I buy an, when you buy a Kindle from Amazon, for example, when that thing arrives, it knows that you bought it and is logged in with your account already. That's amazing, right? That's weird. Yeah. But on an Apple device, on a Microsoft device, on a Google device, you log in with your central account and things happen for you automatically. It's yeah. not like the old days. You know, you buy a PC and you say, okay, I need to get from this machine to this machine. So maybe you hook up a cable, maybe you hook up like a hard drive, maybe you run like a backup and restore a program and you do all this junk to get all your stuff from here to here. Now you just log into an account. You kind of check off the stuff you want to download and it takes a little while and you're done. It's it's uh it's they've really made it easier to spend more money every year, which is, you know, when you think about it probably the point. Uh <laughs> you know, really, I mean ultimately the goal, right? Um and as Microsoft does it, you know, you see that with uh the Surface, you know, you, you logged into it and you got your color schemes and your, yeah. you know, whatever else you're syncing. It's, it's, it's a nicety, but it also makes it easier to make that transition. I think part of the reason people don't upgrade PCs is it's like, ugh, you know, right. it's such a, an awful thing. The world is changing I, rapidly, and is. the problem is yeah. that an entrenched incumbent like Microsoft, which has, a, you know, is a juggernaut... <laughs> You know, is also yeah. a behemoth. You know, yeah. I was gonna, I was just thinking. You know, Juggernaut has uh, positive and negative connotations. Yeah. You know, yeah. um, sure. It's, it's a giant ship that uh, has. You know, it's like being the best samurai in the land when the guy with the first gun shows up in Japan. You know, yeah, yeah, perfect. <laughs> you know, I was kicking ass over here. What's going on? You know, it, it's that yeah. Indiana Jones uh, moment mm -hmm. where yes. the guy goes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Indiana just puts out a gun. <laughs> yeah, enough of this. <laughs> yeah, exactly. uh, yep. well, well, you know, it's good for us. Love the changing uh, landscape. Uh, and I think it's good for, cons I know it's good for consumers. Yep. You know, people in the chat room are debating why Google can, you know, basically give away a phone at 350 and, you know, oh, it's because it's, uh, yeah, it's not subsidized, but Google makes money, blah, blah, blah. I, it doesn't what, matter to the end user. They just see the if price. You if you follow this industry at all, you know that there are companies like iSupply or whatever, uh, tear, the tear it down type companies that will take a new iPod, a new, uh, I'm sorry, a new iPod, we haven't had a new iPod in 10 years, <laughs> a new iPad or an iPhone or a Google Nexus, whatever. And they will strip the thing down. They'll figure out how much all the parts cost. They'll figure out whether they get, you know, what kind of volume discount they might get because they're Google or Apple or whatever. And they'll tell you how much it costs to make that thing. And I, I bet they are breaking even on these things. And I bet that Apple is making $1,000 every time yeah. they sell an iPhone. No, you're, you're exactly right. You, need, you know, you need to find the balance between those. Yeah. No, you're exactly right. I mean, I think uh, the Moto X, they said, uh, cost that much. Cost 350 bucks, And you don't have to cry. Actually, like. you know, the Moto X is another one. I don't know if we talked. Who was that? <laughs> Greg. <laughs> Greg. We have a large studio audience. But the, the, the ushers are bringing people in. I th it was like we a panther ran, ran by or something. <laughs> We're trying to find, you know, uh, a, a moment, a break in the action where we can usher people. In. It's like at the opera, you know, you sure, wait sure, sure. until everybody's on their feet applauding and then everybody Should rushes. Should make them wear white gloves and have flashlights. Oh, I love that. I love that. Actually, we um, really wanted to have the interns all wear Star Trek red shirts, much like I Alex is wearing. Couldn't agree more. To I kind of indicate that's... that really their days are numbered no matter what. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't know when it's going to come, but you know the end is coming. Yeah. <laughs> One day Leo's going to say, hey, can you run out to that back room? And then we're changing and, uh, the logs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, uh, we were you know we've been watching a lot of baseball games as I alluded to, and one of the commercials they they play a lot of uh, the same ads. You know, like Silverado trucks, uh, other things. I don't want to go into the details, but it's the same things over and over again. But one of the ads that they they played a bunch was for the motor that Moto X, and um, this is a phone that, to my understanding, has not taken off in the market all that strongly, but. The more I see this ad where you can customize it, 
I have to wonder if that isn't part of the future of how this stuff is going to go. I think that is actually a really good idea. And uh, you can see it in a small way with uh, the Surface where, you know, just by offering something simple like a purple type cover, right, all of a sudden people get really excited. And it makes me wonder why more of that kind of choice isn't available and how that could impact the prices of things and uh, people's uh, desire to upgrade, you know. Well, you've have um, you seen what Motorola is doing next? This Project Era, or yeah, Aura? and that oh, right, and that takes it to a ludicrous, you know, future Look, point where you could it's say a modular phone that you yeah you you I want a bigger everything. screen this year yeah <laughs> you know, uh, and you could take that screen off and put a new screen on. I think this you is know? what they're what they were headed towards. They're they're getting you to because the, the customization currently is you know it's what color is the back. Well, but even but the Motorola customization stuff, even the the what they have today, is think about it. It's completely different and better than what is offered on any oh, other absolutely. digital. Absolutely, you know. I, and I didn't even want an AT and T phone, and I ordered it from AT and T just, so I could <laughs> just do for that it. reason. Yeah. And you I know have... the other reason that that's genius, by the way, uh, not the uh, the componentized one, but the customization part, is uh, every time you go to Apple.com and you put an engraving on the back of a device, or you did that with your Zoom, maybe we used to have that, or. Yeah. Anytime you buy like a uh, like a product red version of something that you can't buy anywhere else, or this Moto X, you have just bought something that either can't or it can only very difficultly be no resale, resale. value, right? <laughs> no, I mean, it's yeah. genius because you, you know I couldn't we're figure out why my phone says to my honey to bear with too. love signed Julia. Mm -hmm. Nobody know? wants <laughs> that. <device. laughs> Nobody wants it. Nobody wants it. And you know what, yep. even on just, just the color, right? I, I've been looking, like Paul, for the purple type keyboard, and it's yep. sold out. It's out of stock. I went on Amazon. Somebody's selling it there for 182 bucks. It's supposed to be 129 bucks. Of course. What? They, yeah. probably, they probably went to a local store, saw they were in yep. stock, bought 10 of them, yep. and yes. said, I'm going to make a $60 hit on every one of these things. And, they're, yep. and it's probably working, right? Yeah, I of course. They I have you know, only I, one left on, on uh, Amazon. <laughs> <yesterday. Anyways. laughs> wow. I know. Can you believe that? Wouldn't Microsoft love something like that going on? I know. So anyway, I, I think that is good. That will help kind of overcome the the natural inclination for prices to hit rock bottom. You know that you can sell stuff on top of right. And you know, like I said, you see it a little bit with service. I mean, God, they just added like a single color. I think right. Wasn't that the only new color for what? Uh, per, for the type cover. And it's like the biggest, it's like this kitschy thing. Like everybody wants the purple. You, you know who bought yeah. purple? Alex. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> no, there's, there. we didn't have type cover cover colors before. No, we, we didn't had, have, uh, right, touch, yeah. we had them on the touch, but not the type. Yep. So that's new to get them on the yeah, touch. Yeah, yeah. Color's nice. I want green. I like the purple. <laughs> yeah, I, I bet I want, there's going to be a green. You know? The purple is actually beautiful, yeah. but I've, but that, that's yeah. a color I happen to love. If you don't love purple, I don't know how. Sure. Yeah. We, uh, you know, the, uh, I think that we live in very interesting times. You know, what Motorola uh, has done with the Moto X, they've actually created a custom animation that you can only watch, a, a, a Pixar-style yes. short yes. that you can only watch if you have a Moto X. That's another right. way of making a differentiator and saying, well, sorry. And actually, I, and I don't have one, but just based on the ad. Um, it's really good. You, can, you have kind of a custom boot-up screen, right? A scus or a welcome screen when or whatever you first, it is. You, this is kind of de minimis value, but when oh, you first it? turn it on, it... On mine, it says, says hello, Leo. Twit. That's what it should say. Yeah. It should be like, hello, hello Leo. Leo. Yeah, you can have it say that. That's, that's, I mean, how often do you restart your phone? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's not. Well, you might do it more often just to hear it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but I mean, these are, I think this is, uh, makes perfect sense. This is what happens in an industry where it's become commoditized. You have to find a yep. way to add value. Uh, and compel people to upgrade in uh, in, a, in an environment where, like Mary Jo, you feel perfectly satisfied with the last yeah. one. Right. So, Paul, what's your thought on the Surface 2? Are you liking it? So, I, I actually like it quite a bit. And I, I think uh, Mary Jo hit on something in her review, which I think is the, the kind of profound bit of this device, which is that, you know, it, it's this Windows thing. You know, it's like a, it looks like Windows. It's sort of Windows. It's really RT. Um, the battery life is fantastic in my experience. The performance is amazing at night and day. And I, I spent many hours rebooting the machine and launching the same apps on both machines side by side, right and left, you know, yep. uh, desktop apps and metro apps. And uh, there was no circumstance under which the new machine wasn't faster. There were many circumstances where it was dramatically laughably faster. Wow. Uh, some of the things where it's a combination of not just the physical act of launching the app on the, on the platform, but it has to hit some kind of an online service to get data. 
uh, in both cases, in, in that case especially, uh, like the Bing News app is a great example where it tries to load the, you know, the most recent stories. You can see on the RT version, this thing has been sitting here rock solid done for a minute. And it's the other one's still sitting here with the little dots going across the top, still trying to find, you know, there's new news out there, something you can't find it. Um, amazing differences there. I think the, the downside to the RT devices, you know, for, since day one have been the ecosystem stuff. But, but you, the, the point I was trying to make, though, about Mary Jo and her article, and, and I, I agree 100%, is that you, you see in this device the notion of what Microsoft is trying to do, you know. And I guess the question is whether it makes sense today. And I, I feel bad because this is a significant advance over the other one, significant. Um, it's a little expensive, you know, it's a high quality device. Um, it's something that I think most people could use. Um, the problem is would most, pe would most people choose this, you know, over an iPad Air, over a Nexus 10 or a Samsung Galaxy, whatever they're selling this week, um, whatever the other stuff is, an Amazon. You know, Kindle Fire doesn't HDX. It, doesn't it really no? It's no longer an issue of speeds, feeds, hardware, build, look, feel. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's ecosystem. I think yes, and and yes, and, I, and I, ecosystem something I write about a lot. I was very happy when uh, Stephen Elop brought that up very early on at, at Nokia uh, when he took over that company. Um, I do feel like that's the important bit, and it's the one area where RT is like, ugh, you know, it's 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 better. There's no doubt about it. Um, because of the apps? Uh, uh, yes, apps and everything. Services, too. The stuff that's available on it. Um, apps are tough. You, it, there's, you can't... You just can't overcome not having the apps that people want. And the, right. the problem with that isn't that there's some list of 15 apps you have and you're all set. The problem is the apps I want to run or whatever set they are, the apps my wife wants to run or whatever set, your apps are some set, Mary Jo's apps are some other set. And they, they overlap in little ways, but everyone has this thing. I can't live without this. You know, I can't live without this one thing, whatever it is. Um, the things that it does, it does very well for the most part. Um, I wish there was another browser on this thing. I wish I could get Chrome on it or any other browser, just a, another browser, like a native. You, you, you literally couldn't install a third party browser. Not right now. Right now you cannot, not until somebody else yeah. does a modern slash it has to be Metro modern style. UI. Okay. And I don't see and, Google doing it, you know? No, but Mo Mozilla says they're doing it, right? So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, so there's I, nothing you know. to stop somebody from doing a modern UI browser and putting it on the store. Right. Yeah, but Microsoft the, doesn't stop right. it, right? No, but well, you can't, it, you can, it's, it's like you can't, you can only half do it, right? Like Microsoft has Internet Explorer in the desktop and on the Metro side. Um, if you're somebody doing uh, a third-party browser to run on the Surface RT, my understanding is it's only going to allow you to have the Metro side and not a desktop side. Yep. But Microsoft has two apps, or is that just an appear in appearance only? Is it really the same app? I like to call it two browsers, one brain. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Same, en same engine running on both. It's very yeah. different UIs, though, which, yep. is, which yeah. is one of my complaints because I know. Uh, it's confusing. Sure. It is. Well, actually, yeah. there's and even more than that, different you, capabilities. You can't. Uh, yeah. Aside from the, you know, Mary Jo in her review talked about problems with IE 11, and they're very real problems. Um, beyond that, there are also other weird things like I, I use IE and Chrome on the Windows desktop on my own system, and they both allow you to pin things to the taskbar, and they do them in slightly different ways. But the the point of the thing I really like about the Chrome pinning is that it gets rid of all the browser gunk, you know. And regardless of that, if it's IE or Chrome pinning, they they run like separate apps in the sense that they sit there and float by themselves. Yeah. You can pin sites to the start screen from IE Metro. But they run in the browser. So you don't get, um, it, you know, kind of a unique tab, you know, alt tab kind of a, an app view. You, what you get is another tab in the one browser window. And that's just not sophisticated enough. If, you know, Facebook is does have a native app on Windows 8, but let's pretend they didn't. You could pin the, the Facebook website to your home screen. If that thing could just run as its own thing, that would be fine. That would be wonderful. But they don't have that. You know, sure. so it's kind of a, it's just a, it's, yeah. so it's is, just a but lackluster this is not a, experience. This is not a complaint, though, that most people would have. You know, because you know. No, no, you know what it is? It's not that, you're right, most people wouldn't have the complaint, but it would answer so many questions. It's, it's just a thing that if people, if they had it, they would love it. The fact that they don't have it, 
they sort of like, well, okay, these things are in browser tabs. It's like using um, like Chrome OS, you know, that you can pin things on the taskbar on Chrome OS, but they all run in this like tab, like in tabs in the same window. It's like, this is not very sophisticated. It needs to be better than that. And it, it, if it gave the uh, impression that every web app was its own thing, you know, its own full screen experience that wasn't tied to tabs in other browser windows, that would be a huge difference for virtually everyone that uses RT. It just doesn't work that way. Yeah, I, you're right, though. I did, I did talk about IE11 in my review a lot because I, I, I got to tell you, though, the experience has changed. Like a week ago, IE11 for me was a disaster, like a complete horrible disaster. Everything was crashing, hanging. Um, half the time it was going to old tabs when I tried to open a new tab and it was just awful. And then in the, in the past few days, Microsoft's pushed out a whole bunch of updates for uh, Windows 8.1 and IE 11 specifically. And I've got to say in the past two days, I've noticed IE 11's crashing a lot less for me. And the other thing I did was I um, stopped tab syncing on my tablet. I didn't really want tab syncing because I don't like having the same tabs open everywhere because I use the devices for different purposes. And that also right. seemed to help stabilize it, I think. so. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I'm happier now with IE 11. I'm not totally happy, but I'm happier than I was. Yeah, tab syncing is interesting. I, I, uh, Chrome does that, right, between devices yeah, yeah. and your desktop, which is cool. Safari does that, um, operating. Safari does it. I'm so IE does actually, it now. Yeah, um, I mean, that's something. That's yeah. a kind of the thing an operating system should do. Yeah. Well, it's unless a nice thing to say. It, yeah, unless, yeah, unless you don't want it synced, like me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. then it could be a pain in the butt. It is, because sometimes I'll open my tablet and, I, and uh, like a site comes up that I've been using to research a story and I don't actually want it on the tablet. I just want it on my desktop. Right. And, and I'm right. like, ah, I don't want that one. Do you, know? do you get uh, things like password syncing? Um, yeah. You do? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm, uh, okay, so now here's my question. There's only really two choices for Windows RT. <laughs> it's, right. it's the Surface 2 or the Nokia 25. 20, is that right? So which one do you get? I'm really thinking, I, just because you guys have the Surface 2 and I want to be different, I'm going to get the I, 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 20. Regardless of that, I would say you got to wait. Because, I want to see um, it. I know. Yeah. Not just we the style of it, which is going to be beautiful and interesting, right? But the potentially the performance. I mean, I think the performance of Surface 2 is amazing. But according to the guy from Qualcomm, who admittedly has a, <laughs> a stake in it, <laughs> um, the performance on that version is going to be better. So I, I, I so they have a, given they have a that Snapdragon it's coming out in the uh, in the Nokia product. It's it's a uh, it's a, um, it's a Tegra, Tegra versus whatever they're in, yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, in the uh, Surface Two. So that's nice. There's a little differentiator. The uh, Nokia is a little smaller, uh, same dots, but yeah. smaller screen. Um, that could be good or bad depending on your yep. preference. Different style of case. You know, I'm interested yeah. to see. That. It's a Lumia style. I like case. the I like the Microsoft stuff, but I, I I'm curious to see it. Yeah, different keyboards, right? Um, that that one on the Nokia is that weird wraparound one that has the um, floppy touchpad. Looks like a giant rubber rug. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like Batman's cape, yeah. you know? Well, you <laughs> it's know, very strange uh, looking. Uh, you know, the other thing that I think has changed, that I've changed a little bit, uh, and maybe, I, I mean, I'm kind of starting to go along with Paul. I think that RT is the Windows I want. If you didn't have to run a lot of legacy software, yeah. Um, well, Leo, I, there are there are these things that I write about that just generate awful, controversial comments from people and stuff. And this is right up. This is going to be in the top three. And it's this notion that Microsoft is walking away from the desktop. And people say they're never going to, you know, leave the desktop entirely. You know, fair, maybe, maybe, you know, but the desktop is already dead, folks. You know, that's the problem. And I, I talk about this stuff, and I, I feel like people think I either am making this up or I am somehow like the source of this information. But <laughs> this is Microsoft internal information. Um, top 10 applications that run on uh, desktop applications that run on Windows today. Top number one, by far, is bigger than everything else combined is Chrome. Number two is iTunes. And the rest are just crappy little utilities like antivirus, uh, start menu replacements, stuff like that. That's That's the Windows desktop. That's mainstream Windows desktop today. Um, there has not been a major new Win32 slash desktop application created in a decade, something like that, maybe since iTunes, uh, maybe since Chrome, you know, so maybe less than a decade. Uh, it's been a long time. You know, the Photoshops of the world, the Visual Studios of the world, 
all those things are obviously big apps in their own right, but they're they've been around for a while. They're you know they're just kind of going because there's a certain momentum there. Um, this is what I call like dead platform walking. You know, it's a legacy. It is a legacy component of Windows. Pe that drives people insane because, of course, there are like a billion plus people using it every single day. By the way, including myself. But you know, Office is going Metro. Uh, this is a, a boulder going down a hill. It's going to get faster and faster and faster. And um, there's a lot of goodness that you get by not having the desktop that is the obvious stuff, you know, reliability, Trojans, and all that kind of gunk. And then the inobvious, the power management savings, the connected standby type stuff, the, the, the improvements you can make to the overall platform. The fact that it doesn't rot from the inside every single day that you use it and add stuff uh, to it like Windows Desktop does. Um, there's a lot to it. And, you know, again, it's the Microsoft thing. It's not me, but... Uh, like this, this new thing is Windows. It's Windows. That's Windows. And I know it's hard for people because you know a lot of people still use Windows Seven, and you know what's it's, going it's on. It's also but hard because there, we haven't seen, uh, and we talk about this a lot. We haven't seen a lot of these real business apps re yeah. redone in a Metro style. And I think people are freaking out, thinking they're going to take Visual Studio and they're going to dumb it way down, and they're going to make it a Metro app. <laughs> yes, they're going to turn right? it Fisher Price. And, yeah. That's not what's yep. going to happen. As we don't really totally know what's going to happen, but what what we think is going to happen is they're going to take some kind of a slice of Visual Studio and they're going to make that your Metro style app. And then the processing power is going to be somewhere. It's going to be on the cloud. It's going to be a back end oh, yep. somehow. Um, they're not going to like just strip Visual Studio of all its capabilities. That's not what's going to happen. Uh, nope. But again, people just freak out. They think, oh, they're going to make it a dumb app. It's going to be like a yeah. game and that's it. And I'm never going to use Visual Studio again. And, and, and you, know? you, you, I'm sorry. I was, you know, you say <laughs> stuff like this and people, I know, and lose people it. flip. I know. They lose we, it. We well, have, yeah, I'm going to start running Linux then. You know, I, yeah. I, it's I, 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 I get desktop. this from more people <laughs> than actually do use Linux in the real world. <laughs> I know. Like that is not what they're going to do. Uh, we uh, I interviewed on Triangulation last night a guy a really great guy he's the uh, digital editor at uh, the Economist and a, kind of a historian mm -hmm. of sorts Tom Standage and he pointed out and I think this is really true he's writing about uh, he wrote his first book the Victorian Internet was how the Telegraph was like the the internet and had much the same reaction and so forth and he said there's this thing in the tech community this black and white. Like, the new thing's going to kill the old thing. You know, yeah. uh, the Internet's going to kill newspapers, or the or radio's <laughs> going to, TV's going to kill radio. And it never sure. really happens that way. And nobody, I don't think you're saying desktop is dead, but you're just saying the, going forward, the future is RT. And I, I expect the desktop to go away on RT, and that that will be the pure Windows oh, yeah, environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I expect the desktop to continue for what we'll probably call workstations or exactly. whatever. That, uh, it's just going to be a, people truck, will, right. Some people still need the truck. Some people still drive trucks. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing. It's not there. There's no perfect comparison of products, you know, that this is just like the car market, you know. Um, you know, when the iPad first came out, it was like a bicycle and then it became a moped and that, then a motorcycle. And now it's a nice little car. I mean, it improved. You know, the PC uh, turned into a hybrid. You know, these th things don't stay the same. They, they evolve. Um, and we'll see how it goes. But you know, uh, people have a, a certain lack of imagination with certain things. You know, Mary Jo's uh, Visual Studio example is a good one I hear from people all the time. Well, they'll never be able to get rid of the desktop because of Visual Studio. No. Uh, <laughs> Visual Studio can evolve too. And the computing power, the, the compilation, the whatever, the creation of the app can occur in the cloud. You know? Oh, that's interesting. And, and, I think it's the, not that. The other... It's the interface. It's it programmers. Yeah. And some people want two screens. They want a keyboard. Yeah. They want a big environment. Yep. They want to sit right. in the holodeck surrounded All right, by their screens. But what you've just described is not mainstream anything. And it's That's the, the cockpit of an it's, airplane. Yes. That's, <laughs> that, that thing Sorry. is not any kind of a car. It's a plane. And <laughs> so, you know what? I, you know? I think we're going to see. I really think we. What, I just want to. Let me interrupt you step. for a moment. Because the Joker and oh, Harlequin geez. have arrived. Oh my! <laughs> wow. here's, here's some can. Awesome. That's I believe it or not. That's I as as the Joker. Yeah. He looks good in a suit, doesn't he? Wow! And uh, he and uh, Liz is the Harlequin. 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 Harlequin, nice. <laughs> like I always <laughs> thought you two were clowns. <laughs> The best yeah, Halloween. Yeah. You're the winners yeah, of our uh, Twit Halloween contest. Congratulations. Oh, to, you you get. get for yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ice cream's in the freezer. Go ahead, enjoy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, we have pumpkin ice cream. Yum. 
Yum. Wow. Yeah, it's really good. Beer ice cream, right? And there's no, that's the cherry beer ice cream. Dr. Mom sent us, I think, 20 pints of ice cream from this Jenny's place. They're $12 a pint, but it's incredible. My favorite, also a Halloween flavor, sweet potato and torched marshmallows. They're homemade marshmallows (gasps) with Vietnamese cinnamon. It is the best thing you ever had. I bet. I'm glad you say it sounds delicious. Mary Jo, all this beer drinking has really (laughs) opened up your. Your openness to odd combinations. You got to put hot fudge so, on what you just described. Oh, perfect. It, they come with <laughs> these toppings that are like crumbled donuts. Is one. Yeah. You, oh. By the way, I actually had a donut, t- like flavored beer last weekend. That was one of the most awful things I've ever <laughs> tasted. I made a donut flavored beer, and it came out so good. I'm sad yeah. you're saying. Yeah, this one was terrible. Let me ask, pink, how do you donut too. flavor a beer, Mary Jo? Is it putting yeast and? Um, uh, so it it was a stout that I made that had coconut in it, and um, it it just tasted like a coconut donut when it came out, like a chocolate. Yeah, that's covered. great. <laughs> what you should have done is gotten actual coconut donuts, Dunk it. and then you could have dipped them in the beer. I know. Dunk it. it would have been yummy. <laughs> you know? Oh Lord. I know. Anyway, sorry, yeah. I didn't I didn't want to derail no, this sorry, conversation. Although you might be grateful that I did, because it's only going to create heated I know. emails. Although. I want, I want to say one more thing because I, I think the, the piece we don't know that everybody um, assumes we know, but we don't, is there's going to be some interim thing that happens, right? We're not just this suddenly going to drop the, the This desktop. is the interim thing. In <laughs> yeah. fact, my advice thing, to people think, is if you don't want to go through this awkward adolescence, <laughs> wait. <laughs> because right. the inter- this- I think the interim thing is going to be there are going to be uh, tablets down to phones of sizes 10 inch screens and lower that are not going to have a desktop and everything above that will still have a desktop. I think there'll be that period of time when that yeah, is kind of the sense. way things shake out. I don't know that for a fact, but I think it could. And if it does shake out like that, then you're a visual studio user. You're going to use it on a big monitor. You're going to have the big tricked out thing that you just described. Okay. That, that, then you'll be happy, right? And you'll you still know have what? your desktop. It may be tied to a Windows RT tablet. There's an, I mean, be. you could put enough horsepower could in this be. thing. Yep. Sure. Yep. That you don't really I, need I, a, I, a tower. Sure. I yep. think that the Windows 8.1 based mini tablets also do not have the desktop tile by default. Yeah, I'm yeah, sure. You know, so I'm they're, sure. Sort of, they're sort of presenting their opinion the, the hints are <laughs> this there. time. The hints you are can there. put it back if you want, but yeah. we'll, we'll just yeah. try this without that. <laughs> you know, you know what? I'm buying into it. And I think what the proposition is going to be is yes you could have a toy tablet from apple uh and enjoy that but if you want to get something done if you want something a little bit more serious the windows tablets are a a more professional tablet i think there's there's a clear there is a clear positioning that's that's exactly right i think and then you know uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna get to this it's interesting that you said it that way because uh (laughs) In uh, Microsoft's sort of plans for selling Windows this holiday season, you know, one of the things they're trying to get past is this notion that Windows is purely functional. You yeah. know, that they want people to a little, want... A little bit of iPad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mixed like, in with my Windows. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll work from 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, but we're, get, we're going yeah. up partying on Friday night. No, that's smart. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's I mean, smart. That's a value proposition. You buy this yeah. you get for work, but you have you can also have fun with it. Well, and that, by the way, that is the marketing for both of these new Surface devices, right? Isn't right. it the... The tablet that can also be productive, or however they say it. I mean, so Apple's yeah. moving, as you pointed out, from the consume, you know, consumption device direction to to creation device. Microsoft's yeah. moving in the other direction, and they don't think they have to meet in the middle. I think there's a, a logical positioning for both. That is, in fact, a tablet. Mm-hmm. I want to take yeah. a break, and I I know you looked at the Dell uh, venue. A lot of people are saying I should buy a venue. I'm not sure, but I I want to get your review, um, yeah. and. Uh, you, there's a little question mark. Uh, wasn't it Victor yeah. Borg? I did the uh, the audio <laughs> punctuation marks. <laughs> it's that sounds like a Laurel and Hardy skit. But. <laughs> it's, it is. Uh, I am going to uh, take a break right now and talk to you about backing things up. Uh, I, we haven't mentioned Crypto Locker on this show, but there is a nasty. Nasty virus going around. Uh, uh, we've talked about it on security now and on Twit and on the tech guy and really trying to get the word out. You've heard about these ransomware viruses. This, those, you know, you can laugh and say, yeah, A, I'm not giving the FBI $300 worth of money packs. And B, I can get malware bytes, start them in safe mode and remove the thing. 
This new version, CryptoLocker, is much more sophisticated. It uses strong encryption to encrypt your vital data, your documents, your pictures, your PDFs. And then, then, and only then says, oh, by the way, <laughs> we just encrypted all your data. If you want the key, give us $300. And uh, they're making a lot of money. In fact, uh, Steve Gibson went into a, a local 7-Eleven to uh, buy a money pack, or, or a listener did. And the the 7-Eleven guy said, what's going on? I'm out of money packs. There's some run on money packs going on. Well, this is why. The, the, there's a simple answer to this. I mean, the, the, the primary thing is don't get it in the first place. And we certainly, uh, you know, have talked about that. There's a great article on bleeping computer, what to do. You can even change, if you're an IT administrator, change policies that will help prevent this. But ultimately, the best solution is to have a good backup. Then you say to the bad guy, neener, 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 delete the encrypted files and restore from your backup. Now, there's a couple of things about that backup. It should be off-site. It should not show up as a drive letter. It should have versioning. Because if you accidentally back up the encrypted files, you don't want that to be the only copy. This is Carbonite. Automatic, continuous, off-site backup, encrypted uh, during the transit, so you're completely private. You can further encrypt on you, with your key, not the bad guy's key, on the Carbonite site. You have cloud access to it. It's the best cloud storage because you can log on to any computer with your Carbonite account. There's all your stuff, file by file. You can download it. You can email it to somebody else. They have free apps for the smartphones and the tablets. Uh, and it's flat rate. For any amount of data. They don't say, oh, it's 100 gigabytes or what. This is flat rate, $59.99 for a single computer. If you're a business, and this is really who should be listening closely to this, because if, uh, if you get this bit by this crypto locker, you could be out of business. See, there's, there's one thing I didn't mention. They do, in fact, encrypt it. They do, in fact, store the key on a separate server. They create new server names all the time all programmatically. Uh, and, and we have talked to people who, yes, if they do it and you only have 72 hours to respond and they send them the money within 72 hours, they get the key back, they unencrypt it, they go, Whew. But turns out law enforcement is going around <laughs> shutting down the key servers. <laughs> so even if you pay the $300, if you have the bad luck that law enforcement shut down that server, doesn't matter. You're out of luck. You're gone. Your history. Back it up, please. Please, when you use our offer code Windows, you can try this with no credit card for two weeks. It does work on Macs too, uh, but the versioning I think is Windows only, and so and that that's who needs it because CryptoLocker is Windows only right now. Uh, and if you decide to buy, you'll get two bonus months with purchase. Very affordable, as I said, less than five bucks a month for the individual plan. But they have small business plans, they have server plans, they have a. Just go to Carbonite.com, you'll see the whole range of things. Always one low flat yearly rate. Don't wait for an employee to back it up. Do it right with Carbonite. Use our offer code Windows to try it for two weeks and then get two months free with purchase. You got to back it up, folks. This is a, even more important. Have you guys been covering this uh, crypto locker story? Mm -mm. Oh, that, you'll, you'll, you will. You'll be hearing a lot about it because it's only a couple of weeks old. Um, but I mean, I'm, I'm aware of it. Yeah, it's I, been I, so I, successful I, that there will be a lot of copycats. Right. Um, Steve thinks this is the new normal. This is what virus. This is what viruses are going to start. This is why cloud computing is never going to take off, Leo. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, there's the lots NSA. of reasons. Leo, why. That's all I'm saying. The NSA. NSA. <laughs> NSA. These are emails and comments I get literally every day. This yes. is this <laughs> is why cloud computing is bad. Yeah. Told you so. Uh huh. Yeah, proved it. <laughs> neener, neener. Yeah, I don't like emails that go neener neener neener. <laughs> Even if it's figurative. I don't think I've actually gotten one that went neener, neener, neener. neener. Even if it's figurative, neener, neener, neener. Yeah. Um, moving along. So uh, we were talking about your reviews of the Surface. I mm -hmm. think you note here that there are certain folks. <laughs> so Mary Jo nicely cut out the vindictive bit I had written earlier. What did earlier. you write? Come on. What, what? I, uh, well, I had a little rant, which I cut out of um, the show notes. No, no. Good for you. I, I, I need this kind of editing. Um, no, I, you know, Microsoft gave out these devices really late. Um, they let us write about it a few days later. And um, my approach to that was I've only had this thing for a couple of days. So I'll write little first impression type articles. And over time, I will write articles. I mean, uh, reviews. And so that's the right you know, way took, to do it. Yeah, Mary Jo did the same thing. You, can you know, do Peter a, Bright you at can, RS Technica did the same thing. If you thing. label it first look, that's okay. You know, well, this yeah. isn't our yep. full review, but here's what it looks like. Here's the first well, people didn't do that, and I'm not, you know, I'm not here to call out anyone in particular. But I, my, my point was simply that you, know, you can't review something, really, if you don't use it. <laughs> you know, 
And uh, the reason I mention this is, you know, there are a lot of devices coming out this holiday season. It's hard. Um, I have a Nexus. Uh, I'm sorry. No, I don't. I have a uh, an Amazon Kindle HDX I've been waiting to review for a while because, you know, I've, I've had it now for a couple of weeks. Um, I've got this Dell Venue Pro that people are very agitated for me to write over like a full review about. But, I, you know, I need to use it. I need to. Uh, it depends on the device type, like how you use it. But, you know, like a mini tablet, for example, you would, I don't know, uh, I read in bed a lot. I'll, you know, read it in bed. I'll look at it in the morning. How did the battery life go overnight? How does it work? How does it work in the real world? I mean, you can't figure that stuff out in three days. I mean, you need weeks, you know. So, um, I, you know, it's, you got to pay attention to that kind of stuff because I, I think you can do a disservice to uh, the people who value your opinion if you're not really, um, you know, doing doing the right kind of uh, review. Plus, so. plus your experience changes, right? Like my first couple yes. of days with the Surface 2 were pretty bad. Um, right. And it got progressively better as more patches came out and I got used to certain things, turned things off. So if Mary Jo had written a review as as quickly as those on other day people, one. <laughs> she would have uh, only been able to recommend it as sort of like a foot warmer that you would use in bed in the winter. Exactly. Uh, because, you know, the thing arrived full, you know, 180 degrees warm or whatever right. it was. Yeah. And, yeah, we talked about that last you week. Know, That's right. Yeah. yeah. It was turned yeah. on. So, I, I, yeah. So, on that note, I mean, uh, the reason I, well, not the reason, but one of the reasons I mentioned that is, um, actually, this isn't the reason, but it's next to the notes. What the <laughs> hell? I'll just make the transition. Um, <laughs> is, you know, I've just gotten this Dell Venue Pro in, and this is a, the se I guess, the second Windows mini tablet that we've seen this year. The first being that Acer Iconia W3 that came out, uh, I guess, in June, July time frame. And that, was, that, machine was, that was really cheap, right? Really awful. And you know? bad as a result. The, yeah. the one thing I liked about it was that you see Windows running in that form factor, Windows 8.1 in particular. you got to have 8.1 because it works well in portrait mode and so forth. And you, you kind of see the, the potential of it. But the actual implementation that they made was terrible. The Dell Venue Pro, uh, the 8 version, you know, 8-inch uh, version. They're making is, it look like a big phone. <laughs> yeah. And and I don't have my Nexus 7 in front of me, um, but it is, uh, you know, it, it's roughly the same size as the Nexus 7, obviously. It's a little bit bigger. Uh, a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, I guess. But they're showing it in um, portrait, in, in, in hand. Yeah, mode, and it's, it's very nice to use in portrait for the yeah. most part. Um, you can hold it in one hand, of course, which is part of the point. I mean... I would, you know, again, it's very early on. The the couple of things I would just point about, out about this device is that the screen is unbelievable. It's only 1280 by 800, but it's a IPS screen and it is beautiful. And I don't, it probably won't come out if I, yeah. Two ninety nine ninety nine for the base model. 300 bucks. The thing is, um, depending on you, how you use such a tablet, uh, this thing is going to suffer because of the ecosystem stuff, right? So, uh, so I is, noticed. This is example, Windows. This is Windows Pro. This yeah. is not, yeah. It's Windows, well, core, but it's the, yeah, the x86 version of Windows. Um, on the Nexus 7, for example, you can get the Amazon app, so you can get the Kindle app. And I do a lot of reading on there, and, and that version of their app does things like uh, graphic novels and comic books work. Um, uh, obviously, pictures come through and all that kind of stuff, and then regular books and magazines and, um, and uh, newspapers. The version of the Kindle app on, the, on Windows doesn't do a lot of that stuff. And there are lots of books I have that are very graphical in nature that will not load on this version of the Kindle app at all. Now, that's not Microsoft's fault. There's nothing wrong with the Windows platform that wouldn't enable that stuff to work. It's just that the app is not as full-featured on Windows as it is on Android or, by the way, further still on the Kindle devices. Uh, for example, I got a book that has video content in it. That video content only plays in a Kindle Fire. It doesn't play on the Amazon app in the... Uh, uh, in the Android version, and that book won't load at all on the Windows version, right? And so this is the type of thing that is the unfortunate Achilles heel to sort of overuse the overused phrase uh, of the device. But as far as the hardware goes, this thing is is wonderful. It's really, really nice. And again, I just got it yesterday, so... Do you mean in terms of uh, feel, of uh, speed, yeah. of... We yep, really speed, like the screen, you know. Yeah. Weight, size, everything. It's, everything. It's, this, compared to the W3, night and day. This, this screen is amazing. Hmm. Now, so, but, but here's the thing. Look, there's always like, unfortunately with Windows and Windows devices in particular, there's always like the but part of the sentence. You know, we say this thing is great, but, you know, the screen is beautiful, but they ship it with auto brightness 
on and you can never get it bright enough. <laughs> now, most Windows users have no idea how to find that brightness setting. Um, it's there. There's a metro way to do it and there's also a, a power a control panel way, which is how I did it. But um, hard to find. It's stupid. The other thing that this thing did, and it's an early version maybe, but <laughs> you, know, you, boot it in, you boot into it, you go to the desktop, and the watermark is on the screen that tells you that secure boot isn't enabled. And it gives you the Windows version number on the desktop. You know, no big deal, except that you can't get rid of it unless you go into the BIOS or the you know, EFI, UEFI, whatever it's called, um, which the user manual doesn't tell you how to do. <laughs> so you have to figure that out. And then you have to enable a, you know, a security feature in, the, in what we used to call the BIOS. Um, it's these kind of things like you would never get an iPad that shipped with some feature that caused a watermark to appear on the screen because something wasn't configured correctly. You know, it's like the little things that kind of ruin the experience a bit. But again, you know, hardware, hardware wise, hardware wise, um, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful machine. It's it's it has renewed my faith <laughs> in the possibilities. Can, and we'll wait a week for your full review. Have you notice the battery difference? Of course, yeah. I'm uh, sorry. What? I was Oh, sorry. Uh, have you have you noticed when you have the screen brightness up, how how much it affects the battery, or not yet? Oh, so yes. I just got it. I mean, uh, they make certain claims about the battery life, and I'll do the same yeah. battery life test I did, you know, with the Surface Two and the Surface Pro Two, and we'll see how that compares. I would imagine they put it down for a reason, right? Um, yeah. But their battery life claims are pretty high. Like I think they said ten hours, and so if this thing gets like eight plus hours on a reasonable, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it on. Fairly full. It's actually no. It's not full, but it's about seventy-five percent. It's very bright. Um, I was really nervous about the screen because I could tell it was beautiful, but it was so kind of dull. The brightness of it was so dull that I thought, man, this is going to be a problem. Um, until I figured the you know the auto brightness part uh, out, and um, now it. I mean, I you play like the Avengers movie, like HD movie stream from Xbox Live, and it is. It looks better than the resolution of the screen. It's it is it has an amazing quality to it. So uh, yeah, I, I'll I'll be doing that this week. And I'll let you know. <laughs> Mary Jo will know before the rest of the world. I mean, at I'm that curious. price, it is it is definitely a competitor <laughs> not for the the big boy tablets. It's a competitor against the Kindle uh, yeah. Fire HD. I've had many, um, mini, and and most yep. importantly, the Nexus Seven. But man, they got to get the reading thing going on the Kindle. You know, I, the Nook app is probably fantastic. Well, I have Amazon's actually, disincented to do that, aren't they? I mean, why would they make they Kindle? Because they want you in that ecosystem. And Amazon doesn't make money when you buy a Kindle. I mean, right? Uh, they That's buy true. money when you buy make money when That's you buy. True. Well, actually, they don't make money on books either. If I understand, they don't you. make money. This is, by the way, uh, a long term yeah. issue, but something uh, we've just all sure. reconciled sure, sure. ourselves to. They actually. Don't make money. It's funny, you know, Amazon makes no money and they're like the most valuable uh, tech company in the world. And Microsoft makes nothing but oodles of money and people <laughs> are questioning whether they're going to survive. It's, yeah, it's yeah, Bezos versus Balmer in a nutshell. It's, well, you know. uh, not to get off on a tangent about him, but actually there is an Amazon book out. Maybe I should have made that my pick of the week. It's not too late. Yeah, make hmm. that your pick. I have, yeah, because, well, no, you already did but once before, but... Uh, I okay. Would, would oh, good. Okay. Uh, let me. Let me. I'll talk about that a little bit when we get okay. to the audible bit. Okay. But uh, there's a credible case to be made that uh, Jeff Bezos is much more of a tech visionary than people maybe give him credit for. And uh, I he, no, I mean of, seriously, I give him a lot of credit for you. Um, he jump started what we now think of as cloud computing was basically invented at this Amazon. Guy's brilliant. And yeah, he did the Kindle device thing very early on, and and told those guys in a, in a scene right out of Innovator's Dilemma, I want you to obsolete our main yep. business. You know, yep. uh, that's the type of leadership that Microsoft lacked over the past decade, frankly, and is the reason things are the way they are today. And so that's a very tough thing, I think, for mm -hmm. someone running a company to do. So I give them credit for that. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, I, that's why the stock price is high, <laughs> despite the fact that they've yet to turn a profit after how many yeah. years, yeah, yeah. you know, um, that people an believe that story. people are buying Bezos. Plus, you get to learn about how they sell Pampers and stuff. It's... Oh, I can't wait to read it. <laughs> it's, you know. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I see. So you take a loss on premium. So you alluded to this, but uh, let, let's let's delve into it. How Microsoft is going to market uh, their stuff, the Windows 8.1 update and the Surface tablets this holiday season. Are we going to see a, a, a boatload of ads? I'm sure we are. <laughs> a boatload of ads. Yes, yeah. <laughs> actually, yeah, yeah. So you are you seeing the documents? Um, 
Yeah, no, I mean, Wait, Microsoft first, obviously. First, tell us how you know this. Or however you want right. to Right. So you know in the beginning of Star Wars when they're running from the Empire and they have the secret plans of the Death yeah, Star? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got the secret plans to <laughs> Microsoft's retail <laughs> uh, plans for the, you know, Ooh. for the holidays. And um, I, I've never gotten this document before, so I can't compare it to what they did Help last me, year. Help me, Obi-Wan so. Thurot. You're my only yeah. hope. There's a lot of vague stuff, a lot of marketing baloney in here, a lot of stuff about retail fixtures and how, you know, these things are going to look in stores and all that kind of stuff. But... Uh, there's a couple of interesting facts to bring out of it. One of them is that they actually specify very specifically what their what I call their the hard goals are for the holiday season, meaning windows at retail. And retail isn't just uh, brick and mortar; it's uh, online as well. But uh, we'll just call it windows at retail. Um, sell 16 million Windows tablets in the holiday selling period. A very specific figure. Um, make touch mainstream on PCs, right? And, uh, and then improve the Windows retail experience. And this is the thing that Apple went through, I don't know, probably 10 years ago, where, um, you know, the, maybe they had like a store within a store in CompUSA, but it looked like a like a ghetto and, you know, yeah. with parts <laughs> strewn all over the floor. <laughs> Disassembled you know. computers. Yeah. yeah. Anyone who's walked into a Best Buy over the past couple of years knows <laughs> the hell home that is the, the It PC really, side. it feels like Detroit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. There's like a fire burning in the corner. <laughs> a couple of wild dogs run by chasing a child. It's like you know, it's down to trade. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's terrible. So yeah. uh, Microsoft earlier this year announced uh, plans to have those Windows Store within stores. You see them around. I have the one in Dedham has been there for months now, and um, supposedly they're bigger than the Samsung Store in the store and the Apple Store in the store and all that kind of stuff. And Microsoft, of course, has their own stores, and then they have agreements with other retailers. They have uh, apparently stores within stores and retailers like uh, in the UK and Canada that are not Best Buy, you know, other Dixons and so forth. Um, and I think that's a big deal because what, what they want to do is not have people have that connotation, right? Because you think of the, the laptop thing as like this ghetto. And so you walk into Apple land and it's bright. It's like a yeah. museum. It's beautiful. Clean. Everything's really clean. And you walk into the ghetto and you hear like a coyote crying in the background. And, <laughs> you know, it's like it's, it's you know, you have a certain mindset to it. Um, I, I alluded earlier to this notion that they want to get people to want Windows, right? They want uh, people to aspire to have Windows, right? That these devices would be awesome and, and uh, they're vital. <laughs> we, we need like a Halloween effects page or something. Mm -hmm. The creaky door opens, you know. <laughs> Best Buy, your Halloween store. <laughs> yeah, that's right, right. Yeah, but coming to get that way. Windows. <laughs> so anyway, I have a little article about it, but it's just it's just a rough plan. It, 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 and this is interesting because you don't usually get to see this stuff. Of course, they're not going to put out a press release and say, our intention is to sell X number of whatever. Um, they would never do that because when they miss, they look like jerks. And so it'll be interesting to see if we get the MPD data or whatever data uh, after the holidays are over. How these things really did in the real world, and we can kind of compare it to what they, uh, what they hope to do. Welcome <laughs> to, to Best Buy. Right, welcome Pie. to Best Buy. I don't actually work <laughs> in this section. Uh, let me go get someone who does, and then they disappear. Exactly. <laughs> you know, and then you actually see them outside driving away in their car. <laughs> you know, that's like yeah. the, the the Best Buy PC buying experience in a nutshell. <laughs> or you hear the guy in the uh, the intercom and like. Uh, can we have a sales representative come over to uh, the PC section, please? <laughs> then they never come. And then they hear it again a few minutes later. It's. I, I was telling Paul, I just went to the big Best Buy that's on um, Fifth Avenue this week because I was thinking maybe I could buy a touch, a, a type keyboard for the Surface. There still isn't a Windows store in there um, a at all. And there's just a table with a few Surfaces and most of them weren't working. Nobody knew anything about them. Oh. I'm just like, what they're happened? They're using the surfaces as like sawhorses to cut wood that they're going to use in the Apple store in a store. I saw a woman like looking at one and I, st I started trying to help her. I'm like, Here here's how this works. And they're that, like, that's what happens. The customers end up helping each other out. Yeah, it's like Mad Max. It is. <laughs> I so want a window store in that one, but I'm like, okay, no. Nope. You know, what I mean? it's yeah. terrible in there. I don't understand why it's so bad. I, I don't. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I so, the but sound you know, effects. You know what they had? They had they a saw. Samsung store in there that were, looked right. pretty nice. Yeah, because yeah, Samsung maintains it. 
You can picture yeah. the kid saying, Mommy, I don't want to be in here. Can I go to the Samsung? I'm scared, Mommy. <laughs> I'm scared. Why does it have a keyboard? <laughs> what do you do with that? There's a mouse! Run! Oh, boy. That's just too bad. <laughs> There's a lot of room for improvement. <laughs> yes, there is. But here's the good news. If yes. you buy a Windows Touch PC, you'll get a $25 coupon that you can use toward apps. If you can find so. one in any of those stores to buy. Bingo. <laughs> That's your reward for finding it. Yeah. Right. So you can use that to fight off the coyote hunt. when you're walking out. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you bought a Lumia device. Power you're going to need something that can hurt it. Power cover. Boom. Right on his head. Yep. He's like a nunchuck. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh! Here comes my Samsung rep. You know what's gonna happen from you know because I because this just happened, right? I'm gonna get an email within the next 15 oh. minutes from someone oh. that says from Best Buy. You know, you're such a jerk. <laughs> you know, you're so you're always so down on on Microsoft. You know, like I'm gonna get this email now. See, you see are. what you just made me do. I do that on purpose. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I like to torture Paul. <sighs> <laughs> so there is one place we will see more ads. <laughs> yeah. On your surface. Yeah. Um, so, actually, Google apparently is trying this, too. If you do a search for a brand name. But where would you do that search? Right. Oh, my God. They're tearing the flesh out of that tablet. I'm sorry. <laughs> Turn that off now. <laughs> Zombies ate my it's tablet. <laughs> this isn't a tablet. It's a PC. <laughs> <laughs> That's is that a sound card? Ah! Okay. Um, uh, so micro, uh, so Google. If you search for like staple, uh, who was it they they used as an example? I can't remember. Uh, oh, uh, Southwest Airlines. About... And okay. it's not always. Uh, they haven't turned it on everywhere. I think it's just a test. But you'll get a if you search for a brand name like Southwest Airlines. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting it. But you, but some people are getting a banner. Paid for by Southwest, right up at the top, and it's big. It's a so, but okay. does so these Bing Hero ads? What do they look like? So, you're talking about a banner ad? It's kind of well, but it's in the search result. But it's a banner ad. Yeah, we all know how big a banner ad yeah, is, it's, right? It's big. All right. So, how would you compare that to a full screen ad? <laughs> that <laughs> that's called a takeover. No. I, 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 I can I make that a happen? year ago? I, I I mentioned that the Bing apps in Windows 8 had ads in them, and they're right. not particularly awful. It's not like they're in your face. You have right. to go into the app a bit. And uh, different people argued with me over whether this was something that was included in Windows or with Windows. Is you know the sort of semantic difference. Right. Um, I sort of compared it to, uh, you know, what if you opened up Microsoft Paint and there was an ad in a pane on the no. side? I mean, no, that's that app right. ships as part of Windows too. It's why is it okay in this app? Right. You know? Right. Um, people said it's amazing how accepting people can be of this kind of stuff. You know, someone said to me, uh, "You know, did you expect to get Bing News for free forever?" Um, yeah. Yes. <laughs> if, they, if they include <laughs> as it as part of, of the operating system, uh, yes, yes, actually, I do. Uh, yeah. I paid for it. So if I um, use Bing News, I will get ads in the results. Yeah, it's not. It's not horrible. It, it, but they are in there. But my point was simply not that these ads are unacceptable. That the very notion of putting ads inside of Windows is unacceptable right. because you this is that slippery it. slope. It's going to get worse. Right. If if this works, it will be worse. And uh, I haven't written an article about this yet, but ben, you know the Bing guys did a little blog post and they they put up a picture of what a, an ad could look like in Windows Search now. And if you're familiar with how uh, what they're calling Smart Search works in Windows 8.1, uh, depending on the topic that you search for. Um, if you search for something like Paris is a good example. Um, in fact, let me just bring it up so I can look at it as I say it. Paris is a good example for me because I have documents on my hard drive that are, are related to Paris. I've got music that's related to Paris. I have photos and videos related to Paris. And those things kind of come up on the side of the screen. But then there's this beautiful, what Microsoft calls a hero graphic. You've, it's got, a, you've got binders full of Paris. Yeah. It's basically a, a full screen photo of uh, Paris with uh, weather. Oh. Uh, you, links nice. to view it on the map. You can explore That's it in right. the travel app. You can read about it in Wikipedia. Yeah. And there are our attractions on the side. It's all this stuff. It's a, it's a very nice presentation. Microsoft did a, made a big deal of this when they launched Date one uh, They used Marilyn Monroe as one of the examples that works with celebrities. Right, and right, right, right. right. Okay. And then you kind of scroll over and there's uh, web results. 
Okay. The the thing is that hero graphic, they're talking about using that as an ad. And so if I search, you know, Paris is not a good example, but maybe I search for Paris and Paris Hilton has a line of jewelry she's trying to sell oh, and that no, would be no. the ad. No. And no. that to me is undercutting the value. search, right? Yeah. It's, it's that's crappy, I think. And um, how would you feel though point, if you found a Parisian boutique or something like that? I'm not going to find that in Bing Search, Leo. Nobody advertises. <laughs> part, part of the problem so, is that they've, yeah. they've done a bad job of connecting your interest to the ad. I don't have a lot of interest in ads. Uh, but At all. Okay, yeah. fair enough. I mean, people have, you know, so the example they use is a Land Rover. And so some people have said, Paul, you know, you're searching for Land Rover. There's an ad for Land Rover. That sounds like something you would want. Except that what I want in Windows is not an ad for anything. It's Windows. Right. You know, I, I really feel like this cheapens the whole experience. I don't want an ad in Windows. When I search Windows... I'm not searching the web. I mean, I am because that's how it works now, and I don't really like that personally. But I'm searching for something that is important to me that's on my computer or in my SkyDrive or whatever. And so uh, Paris well, is kind of a weird example. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, please do. Right. So I, I think the way this is going to work is if you use the universal search in Windows 8, Windows 8.1, you are going to find an ad, but it's going to be at the end of your stuff, right? So say you had already done a bunch of searches for to buy a Land Rover, right? When you use yeah. Bing Universal Search, it'll bring up all the things you found first. At the end is going to be that hero ad. Well, so why do you think that? Here, because well, I mean, that's why, how no. it worked on my... I got, oh, you remember okay. I told you, today I saw it. I think they're testing it. And so I said to Paul, I, I entered Disney, right? I didn't have anything on my PC for Disney. So then I saw that hero ad come up. But is it only, um, is it at the end because you're testing it? Or <laughs> because they're testing it? Or is it at the end because that's where it's going to be? Because right now I those hero graphics be, are at the front. Now, I think it's going to be at the end because um, the way Bing Universal Search works is all your local results show up first, and as you scroll to the right, then you get the web results. So, um, by the way, I hope you're right. Um, but, uh, my, you know, again, my concern is, but now the ad's in there. Now, and it's not a banner ad. It's not a box ad like they have in Bing apps. It's like a, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a huge you know ad. It is. It's a, it's a full size ad. Like it, it takes up it takes up the tablet. It's it like a full page tablet. magazine ad. Is what it right. looks like, right? Right. But it was very clear when I looked at it. It was going to be an ad. It wasn't confusing that maybe that was something I chose. And plus, oh yeah, no, no, I I don't think. I, by the way, I, I don't think they're trying to confuse okay. people. I just think okay. that once now ads are part of it. <laughs> You know, but you know, and now the I, expectation is the next version will have ads. It will have more ads. You know, does maybe it'll be a little I'm closer the, to the front. I'm the last person who knows about this, but aren't ads integrated into Xbox? Like when you, yes, you're skiing and by the way, down I, a I, game, I, right? That drives and, me insane. Right. So yep. I think it's going that way too. But, you know, on, on the Bing Hero ads right now, all we know is there's going to be certain companies that agree to test it out. That, and there's going to be a handful of key, keywords, right? Like how often am I going to type into my search engine Land Rover? Never. <laughs> Right. And, and the presumption you. is, if you don't as, have a with, as with Google, if you type a brand name, you want it that you're looking for that brand name. Yeah, yeah. Leo, so do, do you happen be... to have a Windows 8 uh, screen no, there somewhere? No, I don't. Yeah, see if you can get. I just retried to see. No, if no, I, I, I because uh, the thing I'm worried about is the Xboxification of of, uh, of Windows. So if you could just imagine a Windows 8 start screen that has tiles on it. Yeah. And the way that these tiles kind of auto flow is that. You can sometimes have these kind of blank spaces between the tiles. Right. right. Imagine if those were filled with ads. No. You know. No. And that's I, I and I have this on my own home screen, not ads, but those uh, you know empty spaces. And I wonder because they've done it to the Xbox. I mean, w what happens when Windows Nine comes out, or whatever, and they have the double t you know the big biggest tile size thing as ads? That's what the Xbox looks like. Oh, I you agree. Know? You know, and my, uh, I think this is the future because advertisers are desperate to get your attention and yep. it's not working. My television, my Panasonic Viera has ads in its smart TV interface. Now, I spent a lot of money on that TV. I don't, I well, it's don't like want when you buy uh, on demand, you know, you, you pay for pay stations on cable and then you go to watch an on, you're, I'm already paying for the service. Right. And then you go to pay for, uh, or rather watch a, an on demand show, like a movie you missed, or not a movie, a TV episode you missed, a Homeland or and whatever. And they still have the ads. They show ads on the front of it. Yeah. What the? There yeah. are not ads well, in the show. Like, why <laughs> Why would the on demand <laughs> one have ads? It's not, they're That's ad crazy. 
So it's like Minority Report, right? Where the guy's walking around the city and yeah. ads follow him around yeah. in a tailored just <laughs> Philip, Philip K. Dick really saw this coming, and he, he wrote yeah. a number of books uh, that where ads are on every surface, just like everywhere. Yeah. And I mean surface I mean, with a lowercase s. Right. This, this is what's already the future phone, right? You're going to walk past yeah. a Starbucks and a coupon's going to show up on your phone. And the yeah. rationale is, well, if everybody's doing it and you can't escape it, then we don't have to worry about it costing us business. Because everybody, you know, I mean, Microsoft knows this is something its users don't want. Yeah. They might <laughs> lie to themselves right, right. and say, well, these are valuable. Seriously, that doesn't prevent them from doing it. No, well, that's revenue. <laughs> but, it's revenue. Yeah. Right. And their advertisers do want it. And that's who they're cultivating to right. with this, Right. Right. <laughs> I have to say, I just went to Bing.com, and they've got a very nice Halloween. I know, that's really nice, isn't it? And it's fun, yeah. it's clickable, and, you know, you, you could turn on the light and the stairwell. It's got nice sound effects, too. You can't really yeah, hear turn it. turn the sound on. Yeah. Wait a minute, that's the other sound. Hold on, I'll I'll close, <laughs> close that one. Oh, it's even better. Oh, I like yeah, it. Yeah, it's really nice. If you just leave it running, it will, you know, highlight little parts of the room automatically. Oh, there's a ghost at the top of the stair. Yeah, in the closet. I think it's dad. So it's like the Michael Myers ghost. Oh, I, I clicked it. And then um, I got Amity. You got an ad. <laughs> I did. That's nice. They love Mike. Let's turn on the TV, see what happens. They're here. I was going to say, it better be a poltergeist thing. They're here. This is cool. I like this. This reminds me of the old Broderbund Living Books. Oh, there's a, <laughs> a little psycho action. That's yeah. cool. That's fun. You know what? That's a nice that's a nice thing to do. Yeah, it's really yeah. well done. Yeah. And then let's go to Google.com. I bet they have something equally exciting and thrilling. Yeah. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's uh not really. Let's see. Not oh, really. they do have a little video. They got a movie. Some some ugly guy reading a book called Google. I think Microsoft won this round. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They definitely. Yeah, like the girls from The Shining are in this they thing. They definitely and, won yeah. this round. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This is not. I'm terrified now. Oh, I guess. Oh, you know what? Google likes to do these programmatic things. Like, I can make a witch's brew by clicking on it. And now, oh, allow me. To actually, you know, if you go back to that uh, Bing thing. Yeah. You've got um, like, Jason Voorhees' mother is on the table. You got Psycho in the bathroom. Yeah, the You've got the guys talking. Yeah. Yeah, Poltergeist. You've got the kids from The Shining in the door. You've got Michael Myers from Halloween up That's on the... That's nice. Uh, that, I like yeah. that. So these are actual... It's like Halloween-type movies, like scary movies. Red Rum. Red Rum. Yeah. This is I great. just uh, introduced my daughter to Red Rum. We watched The Shining the other day. Oh, terrifying. She had to know what Red Rum was. She was driving her crazy. This is actually the best Halloween soundtrack I've ever heard. This is great. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's pretty well done. So we're so I got the girls from The Shining. I got the Janet in the shower. Yep. I got... Up there, that's Michael Myers from Michael Halloween. Michael Myers, okay. They must have licensed all of these, right? I don't know. It's I mean, they're pointing them to buying the content, so... Yeah, you, yeah that's right. If you click if you click Michael Myers... Oh, there you go. Amy Vilhara is on the wall. Yeah, yeah you get the... Uh, the blood running yeah, down the wall. You get the ad, so... Yeah, you're right. So that's probably why they did Anywhere there's an arrow, I'm going to go to an ad for a scary Friday movie. Friday 13th, because that's right. his mother from the first movie. Oh, and or, I could get Bing Rewards. Whatever. Get rewarded for searching by joining Bing Rewards. Do two more searches, and I could earn an entry to win an Xbox 360 prize pack. <laughs> wow. Just in time for the Xbox One. <laughs> you got to update that. Um, all right. It's yeah, we that's nice. Meanwhile, Google... I still have to figure out which casket to click. I don't. Meanwhile, in Google. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, it's, like, it's like the night, night bear before Halloween or the night before, night bear before Christmas. That's or whatever. kind of yeah. I watched kind of, Beetlejuice uh, last night just to bring back. Uh, you know they're going to do a sequel to that with uh, what's his name, Michael. Um, the, the Michael Beetlejuice Keaton's going to be in the in the new yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. Because if you think about it, that guy made up like Beetlejuice. He could, doesn't matter how old he is. He'd, he'd look great. I thought, uh, who was the guy at the MTV Video Awards wearing the Michael Keaton Beetlejuice suit? <laughs> I didn't see that. You know, uh, uh, yeah. Robin, uh, Robin Thicke. He's like, how does a guy, an everyday Joe such as myself? <laughs> <laughs> I love that movie. Yeah. I he is, Michael Keaton <laughs> is kind of so funny. Down the, uh... So funny in that movie. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, <laughs> that's too <laughs> I love Halloween. Uh, yeah. So uh, we haven't talked about the Microsoft reorg in about uh, three or four weeks. We've just kind of been waiting, letting it simmer on the back burner. Is it soup yet? 
uh, st- it's getting soupier or less soupy, maybe. I'm not sure which. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're they're starting to kind of move things around a little bit more inside after doing the big original reorg, which was putting people into into four teams. Um, one was the Universal Operating System team. Then there was apps and services and um, devices. So they they're now kind of moving people among the divisions. And so I just found out this week that there are a couple tweaks they've made recently to the teams. Is uh, they're taking the Windows embedded team out of the, uh, excuse me, the enterprise and cloud division, and they're putting them back in with Windows. And that makes a lot of sense, right? It was always weird that the embedded team sat with server and tools to me because they are using the same core Windows as Windows. So why not put them with Windows? So that makes Terry Meyerson's org even bigger. He now gets Windows embedded. Um, And they took out a couple of things from the uh, unified operating system team. They took out Windows Mail, Outlook.com, and the calendar app teams. Uh, those were all still in the unified OS organization. Now they've taken them out. They're going with Chi Lu on the applications and services team. And an interesting little uh, tip I got based on that was there's talk that at some point, I don't know when exactly, the Windows Mail and the calendar apps are going to go away and be replaced by Outlook. Um, not not Outlook.com, the actual Outlook app. And hey, so before that happens- We could call it Outlook Express. You could. And it could be you like a mini version of Outlook. Yeah. Wow. Hey, Joe, do you remember Another the codename for Outlook Express? I do not. What is it? Athens. It was Athens. Nice. I believe so. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. I think it was, it was called Internet <laughs> Mail and News originally. Was it? Okay. So is this yeah. kind of like bringing back Outlook Express, like a, a, a simple version of Outlook? <laughs> Good question. Um, they So they have a bunch of things now that kind of have the same names. Again, that's a little confusing, right? They've got Outlook, which is the actual Outlook app. Um, and they have a version of that now on, on Windows RT that they've ported to it. Uh, and now they've got Outlook.com, which is the new name for Hotmail. Right. Um, so all of these things now are together being kind of munged together and called Outlook. Um, and the tips... I know. The tip says maybe this Windows Mail app that the Windows team built that originally was so horrible when Windows 8 came out and is now a ton better in uh, Windows 8.1, that may go away at some point and be supplanted by an Outlook app. That's all I know. I don't know if it's a mini version or the real version or a metro version. So I don't an know. app that looked like that, that had kind of a, an interface to go into calendar and contacts would be fine. That's that would nice be great. App. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then the last piece of, of the reorg we found out about is, remember Perceptive Pixel, those big-ass displays? <laughs> Not the tables, Shit. the displays. The, yeah, the 85-inch <laughs> display Bill Gates yeah. was using for his Reddit AMA. And, yep. Yeah. Yep. And they that, er, they erected one in London, right? Yeah. Uh, did they? Yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, surface they, with a Perceptive Pixel screen. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And they, you were using it in Fox News, too. Remember that yep, Shepard video? Shepard Smith's uh, big-ass mm-hmm. tables, yeah. Yep. So they've taken the software team on Perceptive Pixel and they've put them also into the unified operating systems team. Oh, that's interesting. interesting. Huh. Very interesting. Yeah. What does that um, portend? So I know. So that's kind of interesting because originally that team was sitting with Office because there were a lot of synergies with what you could do with handwriting recognition and OneNote and Perceptive Pixel. Uh, and now they've taken at least the software part out and put them in with uh, the operating system team. So that makes you say hmm, what's going well, on there what is the with software that? part what do they do uh i don't know exactly they knew they do uh handwriting recognition for ah, one so that makes sense right ah. so that they go with the windows team that's working yeah. on that as well you yeah. know teach windows how to handle really high pixel density yeah you know yeah. more elegantly so yeah pretty it's pretty interesting Nick, when you kind of see where all these things are shaking out and and how important the terry Meyerson org uh unified operating systems is becoming so that's that's your update on the reorg. I'm starting to like this guy. <laughs> you know? No, it just seems like he's making some good moves. Yeah. Well, he's a, isn't he really the, I mean, that's pro- got to be the most, well, I, I guess enterprise is important too, but that seems like a, we think of Microsoft as an operating system company. So Yeah, but when you, when you but if you were to think about Windows and Windows Phone and, and, and the ways that you could mesh those things, I mean, I think most people would imagine that Windows Phone would come into the Windows organization to be kind of kicked to the curb. But yeah. the, the reverse has happened. 
Yeah. And uh, that's fascinating to me that the guy responsible for Windows Phone is running their OS efforts. I mean, by the way, also a hint, yes, maybe at where, yes, at yes, where the company sees that yes. stuff going. But yeah, um, it's it's interesting. Oh, it's great. Yeah. The biggest the biggest group though revenue wise still is the enterprise division, um, such as Nadella's division that does Windows Server, Azure, and all that. Yep. That that's still bigger than Windows, and I think in the last quarter, bigger than Office as well. Right. Um, Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I'm just thinking, yeah. It, 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 you know, if you're a devices and services company, I mean, historically, uh, it was, it's been OS's, but if you're a devices and services company, does that mean he's in the wrong division? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> no, it's just, it's hard because, you know, what's, real, what's very confusing is you have... Microsoft's reporting structure, how they're, how they're reporting results, is not parallel to how they're organized internally with these engineering right. teams. So it's hard to figure out, like, which products are doing well, which aren't, where they sit in, in the new orgs. I think that's probably somewhat intentional to hide the products that are not doing so right, well. Right. A lot of people <laughs> are seeing a conspiracy theory there, right, that yeah. uh, Microsoft can hide parts of the business that aren't doing very well by this new structure, which... I suppose fair. Uh, Nokia, should we update that? Yeah, quick. How quick, long quick, before? Quick, 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 when does this actually. happen? I mean, they bought them. <laughs> I think this is yours, isn't it? <laughs> no, it's you. You wrote about the EU part. Don't um, fight, kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One of you is going to have to do it. We can both do it. Uh, so, Microsoft, yeah, they announced they were going to buy Nokia's handset and mobile division and services division. Um, when was that? September, right? Yep. And they said at the time the deal was actually going to close in the early part of 2014. So a few things have to happen before that deal can close. One is they have to get antitrust approval uh, from in a variety of countries. They got India this week, um, but they haven't yet gotten the U.S. as far as I know. And I've, not, I've uh, never heard how, anything. They must have How many asked countries formal. do they have to get? I forget. Oh, they got to do the Koreas. They got to do or the right. Korea, I guess, South Korea. And what is what determines it? That they do business there? That they have a division? There? I don't yeah, understand. I, know. I yeah. don't know. I don't know what determines that. That's a really good question. I, mean, I don't know. What, how well, soon the, before the, way, the company the, can't merge without the approval of the world? Yeah. We so, got to fix that. That's crazy. <laughs> It is uh, right. It's it, right, but uh, it, the India thing is interesting. Not only because they're first, because they kind of spelled it out. You know, they said. Yeah. Uh, Microsoft, or Nokia has this big cell phone business. Microsoft is not a competitor in that business. Thus, the market is not contracting by this purchase. We have no problem with that. Yeah, and then that on the reverse side, sensible. same thing. Yeah. yeah, sensible. But I think that's that's part of it. You know, the depending on the country or the place, like Europe, I think has maybe more of a concern for competition, right? They seem to be a little more focused on the health of companies. Uh, in the United States, we seem to be a little more concerned about consumers and consumer choice. You know, will Microsoft buying Nokia eliminate consumer choice or reduce consumer choice? I think most people would agree no, um, yeah. nor would this but harm Micro competition. Right. But Microsoft's had a lot of e uh, antitrust trouble in the EU, as we can recall. <laughs> and they've had to pay That's a lot sure. of fines there, right? So... Um, the EU said supposedly this week they're going to decide by December 4th if they think this is a good idea or not. And after that, if they say no, Microsoft has 10 days to make amends to their proposal to try to convince them. Yep. Yeah. So you that's know, December 4th is important date. The, the, the Indian set of strategy sounds sensible on the surface, but so to speak. Mm -hmm. But um, <laughs> even if Microsoft's not in the phone business, by Microsoft buying Nokia, it does shrink the market because it tells every other Windows phone manufacturer to get lost. Well, but it's not an important market. In other words, um, right. what I meant by the market was the market for smartphones. You know, so uh -huh. uh, if Samsung it shrink and that market. you're right. Well, if HTC and Samsung said both said, "Hey, we're not going to make Windows phones anymore," right? Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, and I don't mean that personally. I mean, I think no, they no, should, no, I'd no, like. No, yeah, big deal. I mean, I understand. from the perspective of those markets, yeah, I think right. it'd be okay. So, do we think this will be uh, uh, easy approval? Yeah, I do. I, I have no idea on the EU. Uh, I think they're a huge wild card. Right. And then right. um, the, other, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the other thing that we have to watch another day is um, November 19th is a day when uh, Nokia is holding a special shareholder meeting to let their shareholders decide if they want this to go forward. Yeah. Um, hmm. And, you know, that seems like it should be a shoe in too, but there's been a lot of unrest 
um, in Finland about this whole deal because they don't like the idea of Microsoft taking away part of their big company. And uh, I'm curious yeah. how that's going to go too. <laughs> so, I, Right. And I, I think the thing that's going to stick the hardest for people who are kind of traditional fans of uh, Nokia, and by traditional, I of course mean European, um, this is a company that can no longer compete in the cell phone market for X number of years, right? And I think that's kind of a tough one. I, I wonder if there'll be some concession along those lines, you know, that maybe Nokia could enter that market a little more quickly. Maybe they could uh, enter uh, the low end of the market or just the non-smartphone part of the market more quickly, something like that. Because, you know, that's, I think that was the Nokia identity, right, overall. Right. Hey, Mary Jo, any other uh, November dates? No, that's about it. Or, I, I think yeah. those are all the dates. Oh, well, and you know, the no November 19th date is also Microsoft shareholder meeting. Um, it happens to be the same day Nokia is having their shareholder meeting, which is interesting. And at, uh, at the Microsoft shareholder meeting, uh, they're voting on board members. And Steve Ballmer is up for consideration for a board seat. So that could be a fun meeting to watch, too. Does he? So he's not on the board now? Uh, no. Huh. I don't think he is. We're never going to get rid of this guy. <laughs> Maybe he is. Maybe he is just because know. he's a CEO. I'm not 100% yeah, sure. A lot, a lot of times the CEO has a board seat, but that's not no, that's always yeah. the case. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I bet he I is. I can look that up. <laughs> we have ways yeah. to find out. Yes, we can We can find this answer. And you'll get a nice big ad. What CEO wouldn't want the previous CEO looking over his shoulder every day? <laughs> I you know. know. Well, he's, kind of like, he's, uh, he's got Bill Gates looking over his it's shoulder. It's like having the he other the board, pope yeah. out in the backyard while you're the new pope. <laughs> so what <laughs> could <laughs> be, but it could be they could vote him off the board. I mean, it doesn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't expect that, happen. but I mean, you never know. Things are crazy yeah. right now at Microsoft. No, no, no. <laughs> any, any, uh, any, any insight into the CEO search at all? CEO search. Uh, no, we, we aren't getting any new signals. You know, last we heard is they're trying to do this before the end of the year and they've still got a number of people they're talking to and it hasn't been decided. Before the end they of the year. They need a quorum. Yep. Trying to do it before the end of the year. Of Probably after after the shareholders meeting, I yeah, would think. Yeah, you don't want them... Uh, <laughs> Coming right. in there and with pitchforks and right. There's torches. probably going to be some board meeting after that, and that I would I don't know if they'd want to do that before that or after that. Probably after. <laughs> Is Bill getting b vote booted? Nah, no. he's going to be uh, uh, voted on for a board seat, but of course he's going to get a seat. Okay, he'll have an honorary seat on the board after he's dead. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I mean, I, I I just this company really has this "what would Bill do" kind of mentality. Yeah. And now all they have to do is ask them. <laughs> you know, so right, right. I think they like having them around. Yeah. And uh, Paul's... The most important topic of the Paul's week. Paul's got a little tear <laughs> dripping down his cheek. They actually mentioned this. When I mentioned ghosts, in the yeah. chat room said... Like the Indian in that uh, pollution ad from the 1970s. Yeah. yeah. I don't think anybody listening has any idea what you're... You Wasn't do that guy's name right? actually like Chief Strongbow or something? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, wait, something wait, like that. Indian pollution ad. For ad. That, yeah. Thank God for you know the internet. I know the crying <laughs> Indian. It's called. This is like a this is like an Asimov story come to life. Our lives, our you know, the, It is. We live in the future. Yeah. So he's paddling down his creek in his canoe, and he sees newspapers, and he realizes the print industry is about to die. <laughs> yeah, not exactly. So. And he's so devastated that he rows over to the Budweiser plant and <laughs> says, give me beer. Oh, he's sad because there's trash on his nice beach. Some people have a deep abiding respect for the natural beauty that was once this country. It looks like Kevin Nealon. <laughs> it does. He's got the Nealon nose. Okay, wait a minute. Here comes the tear. Ready, wait for it. Indian tear. Keep yeah. America beautiful. So that little tear going down your cheek, not because <laughs> of trash on the beach, not because of air pollution or newspapers in your creek, because Call of Duty Ghosts is 7 Apparently not just this game. I've recently found out. Like Battlefield 4, I guess, as well, will, uh, be, will run natively in 720p resolution on the Xbox One and be upscaled to 1020p. Um, on the PlayStation 4, these games, and I guess others, will run natively at 10, 10, 1080p. And what this suggests is that, for whatever reason, uh, these games 
run better on the PS4, right? Because I can run it and still hit 60 frames per second. It suggests I ordered the wrong one. I know. So I thought about this a lot, and I wrote a little post about it because I'm a big Call of Duty guy. I probably haven't mentioned it too much, so maybe we should talk about it for 20 or 30 minutes. But, no! Um, <laughs> it all goes back... No. So, um, obviously, uh, technically inclined people hear this, and, and they make some decision, and they get, they get crazy, but... I would just remind people that um, we need to really see what these things look like in the real world before we get too freaked out. Um, really? More, yes, but more important. There are advantages of the Xbox platform that are very real and are what keep, keep people like me on the Xbox as opposed to PlayStation. And with Call of Duty specifically, one of the big ones is that we get first grabs at um, DLC, downloadable content. And so when, X, when a Ghost comes out and you play through the single-player campaign for a couple of weeks or whatever... Most people are going to hop on multiplayer and they're going to play that game for the next year. And every couple of months, they're going to come up with additional maps and levels and things. Those things occur first on Xbox. And that's one of the reasons why people use, you know, why far more people play Call of Duty today on the Xbox than they do on, the, on any other platform. And um, I, I still think that that kind of advantage is a big deal. So we'll see. I mean, I intend to get both. I'll play, I'll play it on both. We'll see. Um, I made a decision, which in hindsight I may regret, to order the Xbox One launch edition and to pass on the PS4. Really? And now, of course, it's too late. They're out of stock on the PS4. Well, have to wait. you know, I, the, you're never going to win on this kind of thing. I, the truth is, everybody has a very, everyone who cares about this kind of thing has a very strong opinion about it. There are PlayStation guys, there are Xbox guys, there are the PC guys were just laughing from the outside. You know, yeah, because it's 1080p on uh, the PC. Sure, it could it's, could be higher than 1080p. Than yeah. yeah, yeah, and you can see um, it right up against the 30 inch screen and really get some. Yeah, and it's going to be great when you get online and you can play 17 other people. So that's a lot of fun. <laughs> but you know, every platform has different advantages and disadvantages. Yeah. Uh, the I, the other thing I would just say, generally speaking, is um, when the PlayStation 3 came out, you know, eight years ago now, or seven years ago, I guess in that case. Um, there was a lot of talk about how it was technically more sophisticated than the uh, than the 360, and that and the same people who were talking about this stuff now were talking about that then. Um, I think seven eight years into it, we, we compare the games that came out on both, and uh, games look beautiful on both platforms. Um, they play really fast on both platforms, and what it comes down to, as far as which one you might prefer, aside from things like I like the hand controller or whatever, I'm a Sony guy, whatever. You know, you look at the exclusive games, you look at the advantages that, uh, that come with certain games and so forth. And I, personally, I just prefer the Xbox stuff overall. Although there are a couple of games I would have liked to have played on the PlayStation 3, of course. Uh, but I, I still think there are advantages to the Xbox. And so I guess I'm just trying to tell people not to freak out and like I am inside, I'm dying. Every, every <laughs> moment that I'm speaking, a little piece of me is chipping off. But... Well, and you know, the we'll other see. thing I'm really disappointed is that all the games I see, I'm not, I'm not a shoot 'em up kind of guy, and the yeah. games I was most excited about, like Watch Dogs, are well delayed. Um, yeah. The launch titles Titanfall. are not are not really compelling. Titanfall's so. delayed. The, well, Titanfall is another good example of uh, platform blocking, though, game. because that game will only be on the Xbox. Uh, will not yeah, be on PlayStation. in March. But yeah, <laughs> so we'll see. Well, but it's still, but you know, I had to order. I had to order. <laughs> It doesn't dead, just happen in November and it's over. Three. I mean, this is like a year. This is an investment that will last for years, Leo. It's not a tablet. <laughs> you know, I had to order Dead Rising three. I hate zombie games, and Rise, this Roman game, just yeah. to have something to play. Yep, yep. And those will be uh, visually stunning, I'm sure. Are you are know. no? You mentioned two titles. It'll be 720p. Uh, is this an indicator that because of uh, a sub underpowered sub. Well, it could be. So, in other words, when you hear about one title being 720p, yeah, that's not a big um, deal necessarily. The, if you're not too sophisticated about it, you could say this proves that the PlayStation 4 is better. Right. I think the slightly more nuanced view is the company that's making this, for whatever reason, the engine they're using, the tools they're using, map a little bit better to the PlayStation development environment, whatever it might be. That there, there might be a slightly different view of that. The problem is the other company, the, the other game that's making this, is Battlefield 4. It's a completely different company. Um, the fact that that game also is, ha is uh, having the same situation where to get the same frame rate, they have to lower the resolution, uh, does perhaps suggest that the Xbox One is not, doesn't prove, but suggests maybe that the Xbox One is not as technically powerful as the uh, PlayStation 4. We'll see. I mean, 
uh, things improve with the video game titles over time as developers, you know, have more uh, experience with the platform and how uh, the different, you know, little gutches uh, on each and so forth. And so. I like, you know, and I like Connect better than Move. Uh, I'm yeah. interested about in the, uh, um, you know, the media aspects of it and, the, you know, and, yep. the, and the non-gaming aspects of the Xbox One. I, I, I prefer Xbox overall, and I, that's not going to change, I don't think. But, but I will look at this stuff. I mean, I, I you know, for all my Xbox stuff i mean the truth is 99 uh, percent of the time i'm on an xbox i'm playing call of duty so that that you know in some ways call of duty is call of duty more important than uh, than xbox is call of duty more important than life is the real oh, question <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> we know his answer <laughs> i i don't see the difference call of duty is life see? yeah <laughs> that, that's a <laughs> Life is the downtime they're, they're saying, between Call of Duty. They're releases. saying in the chat room that Battlefield 4 is not 1080p on the PlayStation 4 either. Oh, it's not. Okay. But that, well, right. I don't know if that's accurate, but that's what somebody's saying. So okay. if that's yeah, that the could case, be, I, I just, maybe I that's just, just a demanding title. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're, you're right not to panic. It's not time to panic yet. But it is a little bit, isn't it? <laughs> well, it's not too late for me to cancel my order. I mean, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it will be November 15th for the PlayStation 4. It's not going to cancel any order for the, the Xbox household. It is going to make the orders a little more nervous. Yeah. yeah. And, of course, I do have a, a, a great PC uh, and uh, running Windows yeah. 7. And, I'm, I'm you know, I use Steam. And so I'll probably play a lot of those games on a 30-inch display on my PC. Wow. There you go. Right? I guess. Yep. I mean, you could... Use them on an HDTV. I, I want Watch Dogs. Yeah. That's my kind of game. I want a game that's a little less, less shooting and a little bit more, you know. I It's like I can't even understand the language you're speaking anymore. <laughs> I hear the words, but they don't make any sense. And, and <laughs> seriously, killing zombies with a rake yeah. is not Yeah, no, I, uh, that appetizing. sounds like it would be great, but in practice I didn't enjoy that either. No. Uh, Dead Rising, the previous game, so... Left 4 Dead wasn't too bad, though. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Team thing. Yeah. Hey, let's uh, let's take a break. Our tip of the week, pick of the week, beer of the week, <laughs> all coming up. Oh, look at you. You are a pick, you're picking my favorite beer of all. I know. That is literally my favorite beer right now. Well, except you for might Lucia, do the beer pick. Maybe he could pronounce it that. if he likes it uh, so damn I, much. I, I, I allegedly mispronounced this name. <laughs> <laughs> we'll let Paul pronounce this. I just uh, noticed the beer. Yeah, it's going <laughs> to be like, good. That's an awesome beer. My mouth's watering already. Maybe that's because I'm talking about my favorite audio bookstore in the world, audible.com, my favorite bookstore in the world. I always check to see if a book's available first on Audible because I like listening. You know, that's certainly, and I think if you're listening to this podcast, you probably like me. Uh, Audible has 150,000 titles, really all the books, the big books when they come out. Ooh, there's a new story of MTV. I want my MTV, the uncensored story of the music video revolution. That might be kind of interesting. Um, uh, who wrote that book, though? Uh, Craig Marks and Rob Tannenbaum. So the original VJs wrote a book this past year that was actually really interesting. I don't oh. know if it's on. But. Yeah, that would be interesting, too. Well, you know what? I bet if I click this, it will show me, you know, much like Amazon, you could see then related uh, books or books. People who bought this bought also bought... I don't see it the in The ultimate there. history of video games from Pong to Pokemon. How cool would it have been for the uh, VJs to have done the voices for the Oh, audience? yeah. Hi, right. I'm Adam Curry. I remember when I first heard about MTV. <laughs> yeah. I was busy smoking ganja in my penthouse flat <laughs> in the Lower East Side. Barry Diller called me and said... Imagine 99 Luft balloons. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> He's almost a being of pure light. He is. With a, what was it? He used to say $60,000 worth of airplane strapped to his butt or something. I don't remember. More than that. Hmm. 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 Eh, it's nice. Our show brought to you by audible.com. You can get your free audio book. That book is not available. It's. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but the books I just mentioned are the MTV book and Paul's got a book. <laughs> book we just described does not exist. Yeah, so the one I invented, <laughs> written by uh, narrated by Adam Curry. No, um, actually, maybe I should look. I bet Adam's done books on Audible.com. He's got a you know great smoky kind of a voice. I especially like it when he lights up while he's reading. <sighs> 
Yeah, don't, don't even try. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> um, no, uh. no, he's not narrated anything on Audible. So uh, Audible does have 150,000 titles. Every kind of literature, fiction, nonfiction. I listen to a lot of history, as does Paul. We like the mm -hmm. thrillers, too. I'm just uh, finishing. I, I listened to, to a refresher of Ender's Game because the movie's coming out tonight. Yeah. Yep, and uh, I listened. They made they made a new version that is uh, Orson Scott Card wrote a, a dramatization, a seven hour dramatization, which I loved. It's so fun to listen to radio plays. Um, so that was great, and now I'm all ready to watch the movie. That would be a good choice. What What are you listening to these days, Mister Thoreau? So I'm listening to all kinds of stuff. Um, uh, I may be recommending a book called Catastrophe 1914 uh, by Max Hastings, one of the the best uh, World War II historians, but I'm not far enough into that one. It's about World War One, obviously. Um, Brandon Watson, a friend of mine who used to work on the Windows Phone team, now works on at Amazon. Actually, recommended uh, Masters of Doom, which is oh, a, a I book have that. Yes, probably ten years old. Um, Great book. But the audio book just came out like a year ago. It's it's read by Will Wheaton, and yeah. so I picked that one up. And so I just I, I read the book years ago. It's about John Carmack and uh, John Romero and how they started uh, in software and wrote. Uh, the Wolfenstein games and, um, uh, well, before that, some other stuff, but also, obviously, Doom and Quake. And um, they had their own little drama going on there. It's an amazing story. They obviously changed a lot of stuff. Um, I guess I did previously recommend the Everything Store, that Jeff Bezos uh, book. And I yeah, think, but that's as good. I'm thinking about it, I think Mary Jo was asking about whether it would be interesting, you know, from kind of a tech industry perspective. Very timely, um, you know. There are two chapters in there that people should read or listen to, uh, you know, and then just from a tech perspective, I mean, obviously a lot of it's just about Amazon and, and selling things and how they do their business and so forth. But there's a chapter in there on the cloud computing stuff, um, you know, S3, S3 and A9 yeah. and yeah. AWS and all that stuff. Amazing. And then the chapter about the Kindle. Um, those two are back to back. That alone to me justifies the price. I, that's a an incredible story. And it's funny because I, I kind of cover Amazon. I write about Amazon. I use their products. But I never really, I still kind of have a hard time thinking of them as, tech innovators but the truth is they really are and this is uh, that part of the book any, anyway I think would be interesting to people I'm always looking for stuff that's tech industry related um, I'm going to have a good one next week or maybe two weeks from now as well but we'll get to that um, some interesting stuff so that's a selection of what I'm as reading. you as you can see <laughs> yes. uh, this uh, yeah. Jeff Bezos book the Amazon book is 1995 to members but you can get it free if you go to audible.com slash windows, you'll be signing up for the gold account. This is this is how I get books, is most affordable ways, via subscription, monthly subscription. The gold account is a book a month. You also get a daily audio uh, summary of the New York Times or the Wall Street Journal, your choice, which is nice. Um, and uh, I just think, you know, this is worth the try. It's not going to cost you anything. It's free for the first 30 days. Cancel any time in that first 30 days. The book you pick is yours to keep forever. Audible.com slash windows. And uh, try it today. I love it. Audible.com slash Windows. Pack in W in our chat room says, yikes, I have six credits. Uh, that's like Christmas Day. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. You'd think that six credits, it would make it easy. But the problem is it's not. There's you know, so many great hard. books. It's like, it's like oh, I don't know. I used to love to go to the bookstore and just browse and then come home with a stack of books. It's like that. You just love it. And I've been listening to such great books, so many great books. Pax downloading Masters of Doom right now. Thank you, Paul, for the recommendation. Yeah. I'm, I'm also listening to some Stephen King stuff. I don't want to freak people out with that too much. But <laughs> it's <laughs> Halloween. I know I've, I know I've recommended a lot of that this year. Audible.com slash Windows. Paul Therott, your tip of the week. So I don't remember how this first came up, but earlier in the year, there was this notion of whether you could plug an Ethernet adapter into a Windows RT device and have it work. And the answer was that you couldn't. And the reason had something to do with these drivers would compile to RT just fine, but it interrupted the power management stuff to some degree that, you know, people would experience problems and so forth. And so Microsoft disabled it. And then last week, I was browsing around on the Surface support site. I came across a document about the Ethernet adapter that they sell for the Surface. And it explicitly mentioned that it worked with Surface 2 and Surface RT if you had upgraded to Windows 8.1. I thought that was really interesting because that's completely different than you know what they had been saying before. And so I ordered one to test it. Since I ordered it, they changed the page. And now it says that it only works with Surface Pro, in other words, with Windows 8 devices, you know, with uh, Drat. PCs. Drat. 
But uh, thanks to someone who follows me on Twitter, uh, he discovered a way to make it work, and it does work. I've tested it. Uh, in fact, he's uncovered ways to make it work for virtually any uh, Ethernet adapter, any USB-based uh, Ethernet adapter. I, I happen to have the Surface one, of course, because I ordered it. But um, it does work. I mean, the, the, the question is whether this is going to impact the battery life of the device or the reliability of the device. My understanding, however, is that Microsoft intends to uh, turn this on officially soon. And so uh, if this is a pressing concern for you and you need Ethernet for whatever reason, uh, you can make it work. And so I... I I don't, actually don't have the step-by-step -step in my own post. I linked to the uh, to the guy who who figured it out. So you should check that out if you if you do have this need. Good tip. It, and, and I'm presuming you're thinking this is with a USB Ethernet adapter, right? Yeah. Yep. yep. I uh, guess there's basically just two chipsets, you know. So right. the Microsoft one uses a, a Realtek, and the other ones all right. use ASIC, and um, it works. Software pick of the week. I think I, it's about time. I, think, I could just tell yeah, you. Yeah. Well, I guess so. It, it turns out there are various versions of this. Go figure. But I believe that Nokia was the one that tweeted about this today, which is why I thought this was kind of cool. But this is the classic Nokia, you know, dumb phone game that everyone it even, had. It even gives you a dumb phone interface. That's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. I love it. And I guess there are other versions of this app that have like different phones you can choose from or whatever. Right. But it's the classic, you know, snake game. And uh, it works on Windows Phone 7 as well as 8, which is kind of fun. So. Um, if you are a, a Nokia guy coming to Windows Phone and feeling a little out of place, um, you can grab this for your Lumia, and it, it you know works just like the original. You can play Snake. Yeah, so this was like you know in the Nokia world, which of course was phones. This was the only every, game everyone you could had. Play. Yeah, it's the only right. Everyone had this. It was like their minesweeper. You know, it was fun. Yeah, and uh, this is this is the YouTube video that was making the rounds a few uh, months ago. The perfect Snake game. Oh, nice. It, this is like the uh, Tron Light Cycle yeah. uh, so, game. And it's okay. hard. I mean, it's really, especially on a dumb phone keypad, it's hard. Yep. But um, this guy obviously has been practicing. <laughs> 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 it's kind of hypnotic, actually. Yeah. Anyway, it goes on. Omar does more. <laughs> uh, but... We must continue with our show, so I'll leave the rest of that perfect snake game as an exercise to the viewer. Meanwhile, we have to turn to Mary Jo Foley because it is time for our Enterprise Pick of the Week. It is. And our Enterprise Pick of the Week is HD Insight for Azure, which is really Hadoop on Azure. It's not a show without saying Hadoop. On Azure? <laughs> you get two for one. <laughs> you do. And if you're drinking, uh, so that's your cue. That is. That's your cue. Double, double shot double there. Shot. Uh, uh, so uh, HD Insight on Azure went GA this week, so you can actually buy it now. It's, it's ready. It's out there, available for purchase. Um, it allows you to spin up and spin down Hadoop clusters at will. So people who want to use things like Excel and Power BI and uh, SQL Server, uh, in conjunction with Hadoop, this is this is a good way you could kind of take a take a step towards that and and kind of stick your toe in the water there. Um, the other interesting part about this is Microsoft was also supposedly going to do a product called HD Insight for Windows Server, and they've decided not to come out with that product um, at all. They're tabling it, and they're going to recommend people who want. Hadoop on Windows Server to go to Hortonworks, which is the company that's been helping them with Hadoop on Azure. And uh, Hortonworks has a version of their product called the uh, Hadoop Data Platform for Windows. And they're saying, go use that instead. We're not going to do our own, even with Hortonworks. We're, they're going to do the one for server. We're doing the one for the cloud. And the one for the cloud is called HD Insight for Azure. So there you go. All your Hadoops in one place. <laughs> Our code name of the week. Yeah, the code name of the week, and uh, I don't know if either of you guys know the correct pronunciation for this code name. I think it's Subra, S-U-B-R-A. I'd, I'd say Subra too, but I don't know what it refers yeah. to. So Subra is a one of the code names in the Microsoft CRM family, and it's interesting. I looked up what is Subra. Subra is a binary star in the constellation of Leo. Uh, that's really interesting it's because Leo is the code name for the next Microsoft CRM update, Leo. Couldn't be happier about that. <laughs> yeah, so after Leo, uh, Subra is coming. 
And Supra has to do with NetBreeze, which is an analytics company that Microsoft bought earlier this year. And they said they were going to integrate all their social monitoring tools in with Microsoft CRM. So that's what Supra has to do with. So it's going to now go Orion, which is the current version of Microsoft CRM that's being rolled out, then Leo, and then Supra. Leo, of uh, course, so is the all- constellation Leo. And yes, Subra so is it's Leo's, all constellation. It's Leo's right knee. Oh, Oh. (laughs) better than something else. But right knee is good. (laughs) Right. Well, you could be Denebola in his tail or Coxa. I don't know where that is. It's somewhere in the middle. Zozma. (laughs) Get ready. We'll hear uh, many more of these. Regulus is in his uh, thigh. Yep. I bet we're going to have a lot of Constellation code names coming from the uh, CRM team. I, I think it, Constellations had, is a, a great choice for it is. Names, yeah, They've been using Gemini, Orion, Leo, There's Vega. Lots of them. And know, they're familiar. So they are. Like Beetlejuice. Yeah. Yes. I, uh, you know, moved into a new house, got to come up with new Wi Fi names, used to do dead rock stars, got kind of tired. It's a little morbid. You know, Morrison, Joplin, <laughs> Winehouse. Yeah, it was getting dull. So I've moved. I was going to go to Constellations because you know unlimited supply, but uh, but uh, Lisa's son Michael, who's a big fan of Japanese monster movies, convinced me to name it Godzilla. Oh. So now I'm going to go with Japanese monsters. There'll be a Mothra, <laughs> a Megadon. <laughs> it's good. There's a lot. You have your own code names. Yeah. Your own. Well, names. you know, you're not supposed to use your name or this, you know, house name. You don't want to kind of say where it is. No, no need to give the bad guys information. No. no. So. Except I just did. But no bad guys listen to this. Gojira would be good. Ooh, that's yeah. a good one. Gojira. Gojira. That's the original. <laughs> that's the real name for God's sake. Maybe I'll change it. It's not too late. Gojira. Before Ironsides was added to it. Mm, I'm liking it. Speaking of uh, Ironsides, time to drink some beer. <laughs> yeah. Mary Jo has picked un- inadvertently Paul's favorite beer. I know. Is this really your favorite beer, Paul? I think I like Le Chouf better, but this is um, this is basically like a heavier, not heavier, darker version of the beer behind me, the Le Fin du Monde. It's, they're very similar. Right. Um, it's from the same brewery, Unibrow, yep. in Quebec. And the beer of the week is Maudit. Is that correct, Leo? On my uh, is it French? Is it Flemish? I don't know. It's, it's, I bet it's French. Be French. I don't know. Unibrow is Flemish. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. We hmm. should ask. Well, they're uh, French. They're French Canadian, though. I mean. Oh, it's French Canadian. Okay. So, yeah. And they're making a play on you know unibrow. So. Right. Unibrow Modit. If it's French, would Mo- Modit would be correct? Yeah. So Modit means like cursed and damned, doesn't it? Wow. Does it? I believe. I got to get French, Frederic in here. You know, we've got our <laughs> own tame Belgian right here in the studio. Yeah, we were looking for a beer that was kind of a Halloween theme. So curse seemed kind of good. And yeah. it's, this is a Belgian strong dark. It's like 8%. It tastes delicious. It tastes like fruits, like figs and yeah. raisins. Curse. And it's, it's a verb to curse or damn someone. <gasps> so, it's a good beer for Halloween, right? Holy <laughs> moly, yeah. Here comes yeah. Halloween. It's very good. Yeah, it's very that's strong. A great beer. Yep. Um, and it's very tasty. Very, uh, it's got all I those want nice... Some now. Fruits. Yep. So yeah, you can hot. find this at Whole Foods or um, you, you know any good, yep. any good beer place. It's a dark hoppy brew. Yeah, uh, well, not so hoppy. More, more just hoppy. like um. Yeah, I don't know how I would describe it. More, more like a, a yeah, typical right there. It's a Belgian. Beer. It's a Belgian strong ale. You know, like a yeah. It's like, a dark yeah. Belgian. Is what Here's I what um, Axa Jackson. Action Jackson in North Carolina says, pours <laughs> a dark is brown. <laughs> Isn't that a good t- <laughs> handle? A-X-N-J-X-N. <laughs> pours a dark brownish color with a nice head. Smell is huge on dark fruit, raisins, figs, dates. Taste holds true and is truly Brother. an exceptional beer. <laughs> you know, the, the winification of the beer industry is... Uh, <laughs> yep. It tastes little- good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. It goes good with Doritos, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, not, like not the it. Cool Ranch ones, like the original flavor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there, the funny yeah, names I, I, on this on this uh, beer advocate uh, website. Oh yeah, there's hilarious. There's handles. Action Jackson and there's Lambic Pentameter. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Isn't that great? Wow, I am not creative. Is no, what I just learned. Golly, That's that's yeah. fantastic. That's great. There's some great ones on there. Well, you drink yeah. enough beer. Then, then after you drink the beer, you try to say trick or treat in Finnish. That's my last link there. There's yikes! Somebody from Nokia. It was the Nokia account actually said, "Can you say this 
It's trick or treat and finish. Karki vai kaponin. Karki karki vai. Do they need to connect this to an audio? Yeah, they don't have yeah. a link. I guess you're they supposed don't. to just figure it out. You know, uh, we have a uh, a new friend at the Twit Studios, Smari Amundsen. He's a, he's a Finnish fella who makes Smari Finnish yogurt, which is fabulous. And he brings us yogurt from time to time. Does he put Stroop in it? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I'll ask Stroop him. Stroop is like a non-maple syrupy kind of thing. Mm. It's oh. vastly inferior to maple syrup. But <laughs> we don't have trees in Finland. So yeah, they make uh, it out of bark. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's it's not good. Anyway, Karki uh, vai kaponen. So the, do they have Halloween in Finland? I think uh, Halloween is unlike many holidays has spread. It's in England yeah. now. Very, it's everywhere. Yeah, they thoroughly. do it in England now. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I mean, it is All Saints, uh, All Hallows Eve. It's that has nothing the to evening do. before All Saints Day. <laughs> so it's a, it's a Catholic you know? day, but the yeah. way we celebrate it, it's not you know. Yeah. No. No, you've got two people dressed up like clowns in your office. I mean, it's <laughs> it, it's a completely different Harley thing. Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. They uh, great. <laughs> happy yeah. Halloween, you guys. Uh, do you get trick-or-treaters, Mary Jo, in your 6-4 in your, uh, walk-up? No, no. No, we don't. Not not in this building. They don't come all the way up to 16. <laughs> they don't come. 16, no. Yeah, That's a no. long. So, but you would get like the neighborhood kids, which means the kids down the hall. That would be. Yeah, amazing. we have, we have a few kids in the building. Yeah, but I don't never had them come by. How about you, Paul? Dedham, oh, yeah. Dedham is a hot hotbed of Halloween. My, my daughter just approached me the other night to discuss what I call the Halloween tax, which is the proportion of candy that I seize from her plastic pumpkin <laughs> for myself. <laughs> Oh, see, I always. I think just the told... tax rate's going up this year, Leo. <laughs> I always just told the kids, "Well, I've got to test it for safety." <laughs> right, right. Yeah, no, we we live in a kind of a you know a normal neighborhood, so yeah, yeah. the kids moving around. Halloween's a big thing in Petaluma. Um, yeah. yeah, very big. And I will have trick or treaters tonight as I'm packing the house to move tomorrow. Oh now, wow! Right. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm excited. Um, and of course, where we're moving is so far in the country. I don't think there'll be any trick or treaters, unless it's like Freddy Krueger or something. <laughs> An actual, you know, sure. serial killer. They seem to like dark. An actual serial killer. An actual. They, they like dark country lanes where there's no one about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. come on down. I see, uh, I see your uh, Wi-Fi is named Godzilla. <laughs> so uh, Code for Sale says he sent me some more Halloween. Oh, well, these are more mugs. Oh, look. This is, oh, now this is a mug for you guys. Uh -oh. I got to send you this. This is from Code for Sale. <laughs> It's, uh, it's got on one side, it's got the uh, Windows Weekly wow. um, album art. And the other side, they've, he's duplicated with actual photos and the wow. words, have beer, will travel. <laughs> nice. nice. I'll send these off to you guys. That's Thank you, Code. He's in the chat room. Thank you. He's a fan, obviously. Code for sale has made I don't, I've never seen my face on a mug before. Well, I've got a few of them. Here's one we'll, you can give to the kids. This is a, the one with the broken handle. That's sharp. It's good. You'll like this. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Poor code for sale. He keeps sending me mugs because they keep arrive, I've arriving broken. And oh. I feel bad because... Ooh. Mm -hmm. This is, looks like another one. He's doing some creative stuff. This is good. What's this one? Why, that's me in a shiny mug. Wow. Anyway, I will let you guys go. I know you've... Uh, you've you know, it's almost 4.30 there. That means the sun's... Yeah. Been down for a couple of hours in Denham. Oh, Leo, it's the Arctic Circle here until we do daylight savings time. Actually, that doesn't fix the Well, now that the World Series is over, the snow begins for the next six yeah. months in Dedham. Uh, yeah. But uh, we we thank you. Oh, look, here's a red one with OMG Chad on it. That's oh. that's cute. Our little redhead has his own little red <laughs> little red mug. Uh, Paul Therat is at the Super Site for Windows, WinSuperSite.com. That's where you'll find really great stuff. Uh, tips, tricks, news, and more. Uh, you can also, of course, go to allaboutmicrosoft.com. That's where Mary Jo Foley hangs her hat, hangs her Surface RT and uh, notepad. <laughs> and, uh, of course, we do this show here every Thursday, 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1900 UTC. Oh, this is John C. Dvorak in uh, costume for Halloween. His favorite character. Oh, oh man. Oh. No. Oh. Uh, 
if you can't watch live, however, and I should mention, you know, we are going off uh, daylight uh, savings time on Sunday, and so that's why the time change for UTC. If you You're gonna have to get one of those natural, you know, sunlight lights you can oh, put yeah. in your house. Here comes the darkness. Uh, but you can also get on-demand versions and listen whenever you want, whenever you darn well please, uh, on twit.tv slash WW. Now, not to be afraid, do not fear, but starting at Janu in January, we are moving some shows around. No! <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> Paul and Mary Jo have been very accommodating. You can find our entire new Squit Twit schedule at inside.twit.tv. Windows Weekly, one of the shows that will be moved to uh, from Thursday to Wednesday. See, it's a win-win. A day early. You'll get it Wednesdays now instead of Thursdays. 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday instead of Thursday. But that's not until January. This all starts uh, January 6th. And it's because I wanted two days off. I'm selfish. I'm you rude. Bastard. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? I'm just hoping Who that Watch Dogs comes out are? by then. So I have something to do on my days off. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Mary Jo. And uh, thank you all for watching. We'll see you next time on Windows Weekly.